Hey everyone, thank you so much. Welcome to the Big Four Zero, episode 40 of Edge of Legend. Thank you so much, and what an incredible start. I had so much thank you to give. F.E. Burton, Mahooch, uh, thank you for the raids, Dice King's Drama, Blue Suit. Uh, uh, make sure there's no one I'm forgetting. Uh, thanks everyone for contributing to the Level 5 Hive Train. Rick, uh, Rick M., the GM, thank you so much for your subs and your gifts. Thank you everyone for your bits and your love and support. And uh, yeah, uh, before I get a little verklempt, I'm going to just keep on moving. And and again, thank you. Love you. The legends couldn't happen without you. So before I get too distracted, let's do a quick introduction, a quick recap. And let's, oh, there's an announcement to make before I forget. How could I forget? Uh, after all your amazing love and, and giving and hype trains and everything else, we're very, very excited to say after all this time, we've been able to put together a coffee, a coffee account. So if you want to donate, if you want to give, if you want to do whatever you want to do at any point in the show, our buttons on our little Twitch display down there, they're all accurate. Go find the donate, click that. It'll take you right away to our coffee. We have some uh, artwork there, uh, some really OG artwork from almost a year ago. We've almost been doing this show for one calendar year. Just 12 more episodes, and it'll be one amazing year of Legends with you guys. So we have the original artwork for the heroes. There are going to be some new artwork coming up and, you know, promotional stuff we, we have originally, in case you forgot, uh, and, and more. Uh, so don't do the coffee. Thank you for the hype train. I'll do my best to slide into secrets like an uncle who just talks to you to Magical Scarab. We'll see what happens. Thank you for the hype train. I will reward that. Um, without further ado, let's meet these heroes who don't have a team name yet, starting with Mr. Michael Powell. Tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what your character's pronouns are, and your pronouns as well. Well, as always, I am Michael Powell, and I play the fabulous Rufa. And uh, yeah, he's a human investigator, and both of our pronouns are he, him, they, them. Absolutely. Quick second. Bijou Unbound, thank you for coming. Thank you for the gifted tier sub to P. Kage. I'm probably butchering that. I apologize, uh, P. Kage. Uh, next up, Sydney, tell us who you are, who you're playing, what the pronouns are. Hi, my name is Sydney. I play Alona, and her pronouns are she, her. She is a half of cloistered cleric. She's an innocent cinnamon bun experiencing the world for the first time, and she's very excited to go across the sand sea. Oh, and I can't wait. Uh, without further ado, I don't know why I said that. Ian, tell us who you are, who you're playing, what your pronouns are. Hey, guys. My name is Ian. Uh, I play Woodwart the Gnome Druid. I should have that by now. Um, our pronouns are he, him. And I am not excited about the sand sea in any way, shape, or form because I'm a land druid and not an ocean one. Mm. So we'll see how that goes. <laughs> We shall see. Uh, Sam, what the name? What the character? What the pronoun? What the? What the what? What the pronoun? Hello, I am Sam Sterling, and I play Ichipokton Papakui, also known as La Pacifica Dorita. And our pronouns are she, her, and awesome. sand. It gets everywhere. Yeah. That's all it's, I gotta say. It's coarse and rough, and it gets everywhere. That being said, Kylie, what the name? What the character? What the pronoun? Hello, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kylie. It doesn't matter at this point. I play Shiodavis, the Elven Ranger, and we both go by she, her, and we're looking forward to the sands because, like, she's been on this ocean and she's been in the sands. So, like, what's what's the difference, right? I love you, funny in. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, and without. I guess the further ado has finally come. My name is PJ. I am the GM of Edge of Legend. My pronouns are he, him, and I'll be playing everyone and every creature in between. A uh, quick recap for those that haven't had a chance to go check on the YouTube. We have three more subscribers away from being the full 100, so we can just say backslash Nat20 Productions. But until then, here's what you missed. Um, after uh, an amazing uh, uh, conversation with the Darkness, a.k.a. Uh, Hush Snagglefoot, they were able to get information about the uh, activities in Asmacon. The Red Rock tribe has been doing kind of aerial attacks and raids uh, in Asmacon, and they've recently kind of settled uh, in East Asmacon, aka the Godlands, uh, which has 
put up some dread because the Red Rock tribe are apparently very, very good at bonding with animals. And the Godlands is full of super fauna. God animals. So that's not a good, that's not a good vibe. Uh, upon talking to Isuo at a group of Pondo Bear, they get a coupon that'll allow them to go across the Sand Sea south to Asmacon. When they find their, shall we say, captain, he is a salty, kind of crotchety, bent over old man by the name of Martin. And unless there's any other activities or downtimes you wish to do before boating his, boarding his boat, uh, we will continue. Is there any downtime activities you wish to take care of? Yes, Michael. Actually, I do have one. Sure, sure. Uh, Rufa is going to go uh, motion over Shonobus. Shonobus, find Shonobus. Do you mind coming here for a moment? Yeah, all right. What's up? Um, he reaches into his bag and pulls um, what looks to be a pin out and then kind of fixes it, fixes it on her collar. It's a I say it's a silver. It's ringed with silver of a a leaf. A, a little something just in case. Just in case, if you have any balls or anything down the line, Rufa felt that this this might be helpful. And uh, FYI, this is called a snap leaf talisman, and you get the benefits of feather fall and a second level invisibility spell. So when you're falling, you're invisible for at least a minute or until you stop falling. Kylie thinks that's pretty freaking cool. Shiona, this is very offended. <laughs> that's like asking for a cool assassination attempt on something. <laughs> I get feather fall and I'm invisible while doing it. Um, I don't know why everyone just assumes I want to fall all the time i'm probably the most athletic one here um sounds like someone's got to push you off a cliff now <laughs> just to test, test it out <laughs> i saw this uh, rufa saw this among uh Israel's, uh goods and uh rufa thought it might be helpful it not just because you might fall but if you have an idea of what are you falling in towards isn't that uh, just tripping? Falling with purpose. With style. I like it. Thanks, Rufa. I appreciate it. Actually. No problem. No problem. All right. I love it. Does anyone else have any other downtimes quickly before we decide Ichi to show off? just wants to go up to the boat and like look at it, give it a little kick, like one would kick the tires of a new car, <laughs> and just say, Yep. Seems good. All right. Ready to shove off? Good question. Mm -hmm. Are we taking Joey? That's a great question. Which NPCs do you want to take? Because once you go in the Sand Sea, you cannot have them show up miraculously in Asmacon. What if we put Joey on like a tiny sled that was like roped to ours? Or like we could whole what we did before I put a Joey in a papoose and around Morel. <laughs> yeah. Do I have shape wood yet so I can make a skis? <laughs> so oh we can turn God. this into a vacation? <laughs> um, I assume that we want Morel with us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Although we will be significantly slower at getting across the sand seas with his hulking frame and <laughs> metal armor <laughs> in the back of this boat. Uh, that's just the fact that he's a beefy boy. <laughs> um, it's like we have like what? Oh man, we also have he's... Um, Tobias, right? Hera, Hera, Antigone. Please. How many? Uh, seats are on said boat uh looking Ships at the boat thing. it's all those things and more looking at the boat you can see there's actually no like seats it's a it's a good boat but it's not a boat with seats could, could we fit our uh wagon and the horses on it <laughs> unfortunately no uh you're looking at it like 
even even if it would fit, it might fit if you think about it. There's no way to load them on the boat. Like there's no place to hold them. They'd just be standing on the middle of the deck, just looking mm -hmm. perplexed. Mm -hmm. So. So let's just bring Morel. My min maxer says that we should bring Tobias's too. <laughs> like oh, Tobias and, too. Yeah, because like of his healing. healing and all sorts of things that he can oh. do. Oh yeah, that's important. And like. <laughs> Really good idea. Just so it's not all on you. That's mm -hmm. fair. That's fair. I appreciate. Oh. I appreciate the help. <laughs> I, and I feel like the two ants can probably kick ass and then find out who names we need to chase down later if anyone comes after Joey. That's true. Ooh. Let's give them an activity so they don't feel like we keep getting them like babysitting duty because we do. We just keep pawning Joey it's off. An of <laughs> it's an activity. It's an activity. I mean, Rufa could always have them like oh no. Uh, we Rufa has an idea, and uh, we could have you uh, go to the Dos and Biax and maybe make a visit to a uh, certain sanitari in uh, Adafan, making sure everything's on the up and up. That's a good point. The two keeping, scariest keeping people in our party are going to walk up to yeah. the sanitari, just like, hey. Hey, got to keep them on the up and up, okay? <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Yeah. We like give them oh, charisma boost or something, so when they go, they're not like immediately like, "Hey, there's an army of orcs coming," and they're like, "Not us, though. <laughs> We're different." Uh, oh. Well, uh, they they're pretty good with their words. You do know that they run their own mercenary business, just the two of them. That's mm -hmm. Right. I think maybe Ichi will kind of walk up to her and Antigone and say, "So, babysitting. What do you think?" Uh, you know that meme from Frozen where the sisters have two exactly diametrically opposing reactions? So Hera's like, like a smile just across her face, and she's and, and you can see she's kind of she's she's holding back some words, but she's getting excited, and Tiny just looks like <clears throat> so it's settled then. Great. All right, Tobias, you're on Toby. the boat. Toby, oh. Toby, intern. Oh, intern. intern. Oh God. Yes. How can I help you? Please continue to call my name wrong and get my rank incorrect. How can I help you? Get on the uh, boat. Look, you're not the captain of the ship. Martin is, so rank is not of importance. But we need you. We need you on. We need you on the ship. It would be my. It's a pleasure to ride. I know, you swore an oath. Get on. Come on, oh, buddy. Okay. Hey, let's, <laughs> go. Yeah. let's go. I, I hey. talked to Martin, and he said, I need a, an intern, a boat intern. And I thought to myself, I know exactly the right person for the job. Oh, and uh, PJ, before yeah. we leave uh, Agrippa upon a bear, mm -hmm. could uh, Rufa stock up on like replacements of the cow traps he, he's already used and uh, alchemist fire. Yeah, easy. Uh, spend the gold. We'll hand wave you got it on the way. Uh, really fast. I want to make sure I get this right. The official task of Antigone and Hera is to babysit Joey, but also to connect with um, Adolphon and the Sedentari, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. They're like liaisons yeah. because we don't know what's going on anymore because we've been the no. tip of the spear for so long now. With a uh... With with the full weight of Rufa's network behind them. Yeah. To be fair, I think besides probably Rufa and Ichi, they have some of the highest charisma scores out of the rest of the stand of the, the normal five. Yeah, okay. Point. Yeah. <laughs> they'll, they'll probably just walk in there and be like, "Yeah, we're cool." No, this is what's going on, and they'll probably get farther than we ever did. Plus, if it ever comes down to that throat, that spear throwing thing, we know they got that in the bag too. Yeah, that's true. They're the tip of the spear now. Yeah. Okay. So making does anybody, oh, does anybody else need to buy anything? Because, like I said, Rufa's gonna stock up on stuff, and yeah. Narp. Not right last, now, last... PJ. But we have to find out how much money it would cost to eventually get the Ichi lattes in cans. So we can take them with us on journeys. Mm, Whatever that investment cost is, we can find out later. We will we will uh, cross that that bridge when we get to it. Uh, but it sounds like everyone's good on materials. Uh, Morel and Tobias are coming along for the journey. 
Um, Joey is going with Herod and Tigany, who are now currently beginning their trek to the opposite end of the continent to go to Adelphon Prime and talk to the Senatari and the whole the whole shebang. Uh, but that being said, uh, Martin takes your your coupon. He rips up into pieces, and he goes, "All right, get on the boat. We're going out right away to the sand seas." Cause ain't no time like now, or else later. I mean, it's 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 absolutely crap. No matter what time you go, it's the sand seas. Does he do that whole thing? The whole oh, for sure. And as he's doing this, he's like slowly, like backstepping, like a crab into the boat. Woodward is terrified. No. Woodward, every ever, it is completely worked. Everything that he's just said. I don't, guys, I'm not entirely sure if this is. Okay, right. There's cities, and then there's the sand sea. The sand sea is like a city because it's just too damn big. And then you can't keep track of any of it because all of it looks the same. It's not, I don't know, guys. Martin doesn't, he, he seems, it's, what? It's not all the same. Every single grain of sand is a different grain of sand forever unchanging and undulating through time it is earth essentially it's just a different form of earth just pebbles being worn down like Kichi was saying uh-huh. Rufa looks over at Woodward and we just survived an explosion off of a metal ship with mutated goblins and whatnot yeah I feel like Rufa really came through on this one. You kind of, you kind of scared me with that sand was earth infinitum kind of thing. I feel like that's a lot to take in right before I go have to travel through it, but okay. I appreciate the help guys. Uh, let's just, let's just get this over with. Yeah, you're going to do fine. Let's, let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. So, uh, Joe, if you can, please play uh, The Edge of the Earth really quickly. Ooh. Martin gets on the ship. These two massive rudders start to break out from the front and one of the back, and they start turning faster and faster until the wind <laughs> bursts out the fronts. Somehow Martin's been able to make some wooden scramjets on this little itty-bitty schooner that is now on, on high-rise wheels sticking uh, just kind of sticking to the thing on posts this boat takes off as a sail just goes to the sky as it's going through the desert you see the sand sea ahead of you martin is giving the narration of this horrible mistress he has given his life to as he says welcome to the sand sea lucky me right now because we are in low tide any seconds now we will be descended upon by large walls of water, the likes of which will destroy the boats and us if we're not smart and if we're not fast. What you're seeing here is a sandbar, the likes of which would, would make the darkest deserts of Asmacon wet by comparison. Any bit of sand can start turning into a creature. It can be a quick sand even. You don't know. That's the thing about the sea sand. For a thousand miles and six days of our journey, we'll be put through the most perilous and random aspects the gods and devils dare put between two continents on this planet. Sand and tsunamis. In anything in between, well, you'll be blessed be if you're not eaten by it first. So hoist the sand, stick to me rudders, and do everything I tell you, because if you don't, we're going to die. And you're me third crew. I can't lose another one. Alone is going to look at Woodward. <laughs> Woodward is just going to immediately just turn to Ichi. I mean, I liked all <laughs> of that, except for the really the very last part. We, we should have really cre- like checked his credentials, guys. But he was Let the me... only one to get us across. Listen, yeah. he, he obviously has, has experienced the school of sand I'm with you uh, that was but I'm not entirely sure if the other crews would agree <laughs> because they experienced a completely different school 
and I'm not entirely sure they really kind of came out with the diploma. Did not, did not cut it. Nope. No, no, I'm. I'm... El- Elona's gonna walk up to Martin. Uh, Martin, Hi. if we're your third crew, mm. how are you the only survivor of the first two? Oh no, 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 no! You're, you're the third crew. I've lost three before you. I am the only survivor. Because I am the one chosen by the bastard himself. And he stares off into the distance, his one good eye just piercing through a horizon of white and golden sand that is both deadly still, like afternoon mud hardening in the sun, but also top layer shifting, shimmering, like gold dust being shaken through a sift. Off to your right and left horizons, you can see patches of water hidden in the sand, like an oasis, just three feet to your right. And as you get close to it, you can see it start to just... and be swallowed up by the desert sands itself. And Martin swears, This be low tide. A horror new nightmare be upon us when it hits high tide. How often does it reach high tide? Often? No, 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 no. I know, so you're asking questions based on logic and reasoning. That's not the sea sense. That's not the sense. No, it's that often. It's when you don't want it most that it comes. On its own volition, like half himself is just flipping you the bird for trying. So the sea is moody. I mean, I'm capricious. I prefer chaotic. Well, that's, that's a good one, yeah. <laughs> chaotic. He gets out a small book and he starts writing chaotic. He puts it back in his little vest. All right. Okay. So we have a, a true neutral C, chaotic neutral C. Uh, and we have uh, a true neutral captain. Uh, and, um, well, I suppose we just sit back and relax and wait for wait for things to go wrong, like they always do. Yeah, so how, we, how can we how can we try to make this better? They're doing the job of the crew. That's what you're going to be doing. Here's the first thing I'm going to ask you to do. I need you to run this boat. I know the way, I, but I'm one little old man. I need exuberance, youth, strength, and, and whatever it is he's got. And he points to Tobias. He goes, me? N- no, 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 no. You adorable old man. No. Yeah, I have not. a tendency to agree. What's each? What, what does he got that Ichi doesn't? What's really good hair? Uh, and I want it. It's valid. Yes. I mean, don't get me wrong, Lass. Your hair is absolutely terrific. He's got that, like, and you see his hands go whoosh, 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 like trying to imitate the way Tobias's hair just does that thing. Oh. So, I, I feel like the credentials used to pick people for the different parts of the crew are a little, uh, they're a little sus, guys. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little, I'm a little confused on what would you use to, he's the best rudder men because of his hair? Maybe it's got to do with the. Maybe he's got good biotin, which makes you really good at rowing, and that's how. I don't know. Listen, let's all be real here. We know Tobias probably has gotten some jobs because of his hair before. None of this is new. We just keep moving forward, approve myself, even if I don't have long flowing golden locks. No, but you have really cute ponytails. But also. Uh, if that means Tobias is rowing, that means we don't have to do anything. So, like, we can just, like, sit back, relax, let the intern do the work, you know? Um... That's when Martin, like, runs up to you in a steely finger, like, gnarled and old and just just made impossibly strong from years of, of just sailing, just pokes you right in the leg hard, like a blunt dagger, and he goes, No! Not on my watch, no! You are already put into work! A boat lives and dies, but the people on it, assuming they don't live or die. So here's what I need you to do. Out of character, here's what I need you to do. 
Athletics check, acrobatics check, survival check, perception, or nature. The choice is yours, but only one can be done by one person. And you cannot give aid to another because each of you should be busy with a check of your very own. In this moment, you are now rigging, crewing, rowing, and guiding this ship along with Martin and tragically Tobias as you are moving on your first day out into the sand sea. What right. was it next again? Uh, athletics check, acrobatics check, survival check, perception check, and nature check. Uh, these do have very specific jobs. Uh, trust uh, that no matter what you're doing, if you're worried about the other NPCs, they're doing their best. Uh, so athletics is mostly for the rudders, which when you see them, they're basically giant uh, wooden fans that require someone to turn this massive crank. As you're turning the cranks, you're forcing the fans to basically act as a jet engine and intake air and outtake momentum. So you're basically keeping the thing moving on dry land. Uh, acrobatics will be to climb up and tie rigging. That will be for, of course, keeping the sail open in case there's any air excess, as well as steering this crazy thing. Uh, survival will be to make sure that you are manning the navigation, uh, sail and course. You will be with Martin, who is just screaming obscenities and nonsense. Last but not, I'm sorry, perception will be to maintain a lookout for threats and mirages as Martin is persistent that they are everywhere ever present. And last but not least, nature check. As sand is constantly blowing in and out of this boat, and that could of course create some problems, nature checks are there to basically take these giant buckets of water and to slough off any excess debris, sand, bones that get spit up by the by the sand. Your job is to throw buckets of water and to make sure the deck is clean. So, choice is yours. Make your rolls. I'll tell you the DC after you roll them. Well, I'll tell you if you succeed or not. I'll... Uh, nobody minds. If we could do the perception check, unless you want him to be the ship's cook. Oh, the perception... So, as our chaotic flailing, I don't know if everybody was able to keep up with that. <laughs> but I think we were thinking either you were going to do the perception or the uh, acrobatics. Well, I can do acrobatics since I have the feather fall. So. Oh, right, 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 right. Well, there my it is. My perception's higher. Um... <laughs> And I got just... athletics. Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. And then what's left? Wait, you have nature, Ian. I have nature. And so that it would be survival or acrobatics. Oh, I'm having acrobatics. Oh, no, you have acrobatics. So survival and... Okay. I can do that. I'm okay with that. I've read books. I have a travel guide. <laughs> Great. <laughs> she read the entire Girl Scout manual. I did. I never got to be a Girl Scout because I was too busy doing temple stuff. But now, here we are. I'm gonna get badges. We gotta make badges! Ooh, good. Yeah. Just saying. Just saying. Uh, I got a 24 for survival. Okay. Check 18 for acrobatics. 18 for acrobatics? Yeah. Okay. Um... Quick question. Uh, one mm -hmm. of the things I was hoping to, I, I have a list of the stuff that I bought, mm -hmm. and one of them is a compass. So, could I get my bonus from that compass for perception? Um, does it give a bonus to perception or yeah. does it give a bonus to survival? Oh, it gives to perception? Sure, if you want to pop that talisman so. down. Sure. That's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I went through the whole thing like, yeah, this looks like it's going to be useful for this adventure. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's see here. Sam Sterling, what was yours? 29 for athletics. Sam. Okay. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Ian, what was your nature check? I assume you um, nature check. Yes. Uh, it is a 17. Okay. All right, Michael Powell, what is that perception check? Um, oh, real quick. Uh, so is this is, would be sense direction or a navigate skill? Or no, is just, just perception a, check. Oh, just perception. Okay. Mm-hmm. Twenty-seven then. Twenty-seven, because you are you're basically just kind of doing Overwatch on the ship to make sure there's okay. no threats on the porter or porter starboard. Okay. Shonibus and Ian, I need you to both roll a one d four. Are we rolling high or low? What are we doing, Kylie? You go high, I go low. 
Let's hope for the best. Oh, that's cocked. Hold on. <laughs> One. I got a four. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nailed it. Perfect. Okay. Manifest that. Yeah, there it is. So, one of us would have gotten something really good or really bad. As the boat continues, you're you're doing your rigging, you're doing your ruddering, moving the rudders really hard, and everything's happening. Suddenly, you see Martin sniff the air. Damn you for being so quick to the punch. Suddenly, the the sail becomes thick and full and taut with air, and you can see coming down the road, coming down the sand the sand sea, this giant bees. No, these giant storm of sand. This giant cloud comes rolling over the horizon at you, like a stampede. Only all it is is sand and fury. It is about this time that the sun itself becomes blocked out. You don't know why. It's still bright everywhere, but directly above you until you look to your right and you see a body of water 150 feet high. And as the water starts to rise, you see coming to the edge of the water, fish with gnarly mouths, massive hooks for teeth, under jaw going out and hanging from the top of their head. You see what looks like this horrible gemstone that's just pulsing. And behind them, you see what looks like men with gills on their neck and octopus mouths and three eyes as they're dragging this rope and they're pulling behind them the carcass of a bloated shark. And they're in the water walls directly to your right. And that's when Martin looks and goes, I tide be upon us in a sandstorm to boot. <laughs> Why not? I need everyone to make saves against the sandstorm of Bruin, and I need everyone to make actions to uh, basically brace for impact as the giant wall of water is coming down. Martin starts screaming. On the part side, we have what looks like a wooden bench. Throw it over the right side. Someone needs to give me an athletics check to throw that Do it. bench off the right. Give me an athletics check. Speed of 20. Uh, oh, that is... Oh, that's a 20. Dirty 20, exactly. Perfect. You... you you pick it up, you throw it, and it kind of drops out and swings. And all of a sudden, you see off the right side this massive wooden buoy attached with two arms just kind of coming out and being prepped. And then he starts shouting, Get the stairs down! Get it down right away! It's going to break open the wall! Give me that down! I need acrobatics check to get the sails down. Is it acrobatics? Mm-hmm. 23. 23. Excellent. You're able to get that thing down in a jiffy. The sail <laughs> crashes the deck, but it's fine. And then he says, last but not least, rudders, full blast forward. Everyone else, hit the deck. So someone's got to do an athletics check on those rudders. It can't be Ichi. She's already saved you once. Who's going to do athletics on the rudders? Um, I, I can't. Fast. Fast. Give me yeah, the athletics yeah, yeah. check. Roll it. Roll it. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Sure enough, you just and, and you're just pumping with your arms, and you can start hearing this 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 absolute whir of sand. Everyone else, give me a reflex save. Beat the DC of twenty. Oh no! <laughs> Twenty-eight. You good? What you got again? <laughs> I got an eleven. Oh no, that's not no. good. Twenty-two. 22. Okay. Well. Okay. So, um, so Ian, you did not get the 20. Uh, Alona, you didn't get the 20? No, I got a 12. I wasn't really aiming for it, you know? So. <laughs> you, have to, you have to visualize. Yeah. I, I yeah, yeah, yeah. Visualize. yeah. Just like, okay. take me. So, Ian. Octopus and, mouth people. <laughs> Ian and Alona, 
you take nine damage as this sand rips across your body with the severity of a broadsword. Just... You're uh, fully healed else... because of the long rest, right? You, you are healed from the long great, rest, the you. downtime, everything. You're good. But you've taken nine damage from the elements of this horrendous uh, sandstorm. Uh, everyone has hit the deck. Now, one last thing, because you can hear Martin's shrill cackle and laughter as he says, Come on. Come on, James Water. Come on. I need acrobatics checks to stay balanced in the boat as this monsoon is literally crusting overhead like the fist of an angry god about to punch your boat. 19. 19. Oof. Okay. Noted. You said acrobatics, correct? Sorry. Mm hmm. All right, Ian, Great. what's that? I got a six. No, that's not good. Rufa, what you got? 24. Good. Alona, what you got? 17. Okay, okay. Sam, what you got? Also a 24. Good, good, good. So, Rufa, Ichi, you're about to get very busy. As the water slams and collides into the deck of the boat, you can suddenly, all of your hearing vanishes like your head's been plunged into a vacuum as you can hear the glub glub of the water rushing past your senses is at this time that you can feel presences just moving past you remind me Shinobis, what was your acrobatics again is 19. as the water proceeds to just wash over the deck and almost drown the ship you can feel the whole ship having this kind of like teeter-totter bird motion and with, within a few seconds, the whole boat just comes out of the water like a like a whale that is breached. And it's all because that displacement perch, the buoy that you all put out earlier. However, as you're coughing water from the from the, the sea that's just choking you, you look and you see a lack of Woodward, Alona, and Shionibus as they've been thrown off the boats. They are now just kicking out of the water. A massive ocean that has just formed around them that is dragging them under. They need to be saved. The two of you are the only ones that can start to save them. Give me an athletics check. The easy to beat is their fortitude save. You are literally grappling them. Was there anything that anyone who got swept away had time to shout before? You they were deep, away. deep under that water. Okay. Unless someone can speak Ogwin, but probably not. You said it was athletics? Athletics check. You are literally making a grapple check against a uh, character of your choosing. So no offense, but choose your favorites. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Question. Uh, uh -huh. Can I use an interact action to for my weapon to change into a regular whip? Uh, yeah, but you still have to make the athletics check with it. Okay. I got a 26. Each is gonna like look around, try find some rope lying around, tie it to her waist and dive in after Ilona, because if, well, then she can heal with her later if we need to. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I don't know how to swim. Oh my oh, God. Oh, what? Um, Ilona. My entire life. <laughs> Did, it, Did you read a book or something? Ilona. You can read a book about swimming until you're actually in the water, and it's totally different. This is like that scene from Page Master when he hits the Moby Dick novel. <laughs> that's, like a, say, that's a crazy callback, if anybody else got <laughs> that, but it happened. I saw that at the University Mall Theater in Fairfax, Virginia. Anyway, um, so it's a great movie. So, Alona, I need to know, what is your fortitude bonus plus 10? Uh, 18. 18, and is that plus 8 plus 10? Yes. Okay, cool. And you said a 26? Yeah. So, Alona, you are kicking with that childlike inefficacy of, of a kid who's just learning to swim at summer camp. You are flailing. It is bad, and your, your chin is struggling to keep above the water level, and you're starting to feel like you're, you're taking in water in your mouth. Eventually, you feel the strong two arms grab you, and I imagine then placed your your waist into their legs as Ichi 
has critically saved you and is swimming you back to the boat. Now, there's two people overboard left. Ichi's in the water. Michael's on the boat. Michael, what are you going to do? Who are you going to save? Uh, real quick, would I be able to use my athletic strategist feat? So instead of my strength bonus, it would be my intelligence bonus for this? You're going to have to physically haul them. Get okay. better, make okay. an athletics check. W worth a check. Um, Don't blame you. Heads, Woodward, Tails, Chonovus. Oh, coin flips. <laughs> Sorry, Ian. <laughs> it, it was the luck of the coin. It was, totally it was the luck fine. of the coin. Totally fine. 110% with it. Okay, uh, which was a 21. 21. So you're going after Chonovus, correct? Yeah. Chonovus. What is your fortitude save plus 10? 18. You wrap, the, I'm assuming you're wrapping it with the whip, right? Yeah. You wrap the whip around her, Indiana Jones one style, and as it just latches around, you start getting in a deep dancing stance and you just start pulling with your core and years of that strong back from dancing and you are able to get Shionibus back to the side of the boat. Now, Shionibus is by the boat. Itchy is swimming through. Woodward's a small-sized creature with a strength modifier of what again? Uh, negative one. A small-sized creature with a negative one is now currently thrashing about in the ocean. It ain't no thing. Um, my fortitude mm -hmm. save against me, plus 10, guys, would have been a 21 you had to have hit, which is, like, already high and heavy. Um, Woodwork turns into a shark. There it is. And he swims back towards the boat. I was as soon as Michael pulled out the coin, I was like, "Don't, don't pick me, don't pick me, don't pick me." I'm literally the only person who has a life jacket. Um, so uh, Woodward just kind of getting turned upside down and seeing this water swirl around him, he knows he has one thing that he can do. And uh, with that, he just starts to, like a cover of an animorph, small, <laughs> turns slowly turns into a shark with the gills and everything, and swims up towards the uh, the boat he sees on the surface. I love it. Just Best for King Shark life. There it is. <laughs> Just for giggles, give me an athletics check as a shark to swim. I'm pretty sure you got the speed for it, but I want to see if you can break the chop. Right. Um, I'm going to look that up really quick. Sure, if sure. anybody else needs anything. Okay. Well, the good thing is, is that uh, once... You know, he turns into a shark and starts moving. The water is still extremely choppy. It is rough because there is a ton of displacement that just happened. In fact, you can feel the ripples, the, the sheer power of the earth moving through the water. Um, but the sandstorm has been swallowed by the sea. The minute everyone's on deck, there seems to be no other threats in your vicinity. Athletics. I got a uh, 19. Perfect. And my swimming is a 40 feet per action. So if I take all three actions, I'm, yeah. yeah. Just hauling full speed. You run and then you just, you breach the water. I'm going to say you just transform into Woodward midair and land on your feet. Absolutely. Yeah. If I need to roll the acrobatics check, I will also take hitting the uh, mast and just holding onto the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let that happen. That sounds adorable. Great. So you just and you grab the thing. Uh, you see Mush is on the deck still, just like sniffing you like crazy. I was sure you're all right. So once everyone's on the boat and the sheer chop and tide and rage of the sea starts to finally settle, it becomes a boat ride, kind of traditional. The sail goes back up. No rudders. Keep out the dinghy on the side for balance in the seas in case, as Martin says, low tide be dropping. And you just continue across the ocean. It's a pretty relaxing day, which turns into night, which turns into a full moon and a starry night sky. Martin's just muttering his own little sea insanity, like some, uh... What's, what's his name? Some some sort of Hemingway novel. He's just muttering to himself some insanity. Uh, if you wish to have a downtime, you can. If not, day two comes next. Oh. Uh, 
How you doing, Woodward? You, see, it was fine. You, uh, you got that shark thing. Uh, Woodward is um, at the bottom of the mast with his butt on the ground now, but he's still just holding the center of it. He's just like with mush next to him. Yeah, I've got the shark thing. Like, yeah, it's but it's not. It's not like an easy thing to do, Ichi. It's not like just, I got this all the time. Um, but I guess this should be said, if I go over and there's water or there's uh, well, if I go over, don't come get me. I probably got a way to get back. Okay. <laughs> As he's just kind of trying to think through, I've got this, I've got this, I've got this. <laughs> trying to breathe through the situation. Do you want me to like, tie you to the mast it's like yeah. you can use your hands to like pet mush you know i'm gonna i'm gonna be real uh i'll let go but i'm afraid that if we hit by another one of these waves the boat's gonna be splinters anyway so being tied to a bunch of splinters isn't gonna do me much good well uh, t if you think about it he said he's lost three crews not three boats oh well, uh, Woodward just kind of like starts to nod his head. That's that's a that's a good point. I guess I can. Like Woodward slowly starts to let go from the mast and like turn around to like pet mush. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Only one boat. He's got one boat. Great. All right. Uh, any other downtime before day two? Day two comes, you are awoken by the sudden, inexorable heat and bleaching intensity of a sun. A sun that is going unabated without any canopy tree lines, uh, cities, or even a bottom deck of the ship that you can sleep under. The minute that thing's up, you're up, whether you want to be or not. And if you decide to be stubborn, like some golden hair pretty boy from the Platinum Hammer, Martin's steel-like fingers just keep jabbing into your ribs until said pretty boy wakes up with swearing. Um, but it is day two. Everything seems fine. Martin starts asking you all to help with the ship. I need the same five sailing checks made again. Acrobatics, athletics, survival, perception, and nature. Oh, that's a good view. What? Nat oh, 20. did you? Oh, you just Nat rolled your 20 as well. Wow. You just Ooh. rolled the survival. Three the charm. Mm -hmm. Survival for Alona. Okay, that's a that's a critical 20. And Rufo, what are you rolling yours for? Uh, perception crit 20. Yes. Okay. Nice. Wait, is a hero point? No. Is that way. a net 20, Ian? Yes. Oh what? my god. I'm so stoked. <laughs> Oh my god. If I get, I swear to god, if I get one more Matt 20, I know what my my level 5 hype train is going to be. Okay, so that's one from Ian. That was for nature, correct? Switching my dice. Yes. Okay. Comes out to a 28 total. Oh, I'll even take a dirty crit at this point, but I don't can make... Well, I don't want to say the numbers. I want to ruin it. Uh, Question. Answer. Do I get anything for having sailed before? Yes. Normally there'd be a mechanical thing, like a background skill or whatever, but I'll give you a plus two because you spent like 50 years on a Viking ship. So I think you know what you're doing. I hope so. Oh, that's fucked. Hold on. That was a 28 for me. 28? Yeah. That's 26. Yeah, okay. 20, yeah, 26, 27, something like that. So, you all go up the rigging, sails down. You're just going crazy on the rudder. You look out to seas and you're seeing chop. You're seeing a sky that goes from a bright golden baking yellow and, and, and gold to a dark, salty gray. The clouds getting thick and heavy and dark. But everything else seems to be going just perfectly fine until the first drop hits your nose. Rain. Rain at sea. And with these skies and that chop down the way getting worse, storms are brewing. 
real bad storm is coming off the horizon. And you can hear Martin just cackling again. As he's like, ho, 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 ho. There's always something with you, isn't there, Sensi? First you gave me a low tide, high tide switcheroo. And now you're giving me the windy how do you do. Everyone else hands on deck. I'm gonna need someone helping me maintain course. Everyone else, all your strength and might to keep that sail from dropping or breaking. We got ourselves uh, a gusty bastard. Rufa could help with that, but he's also gonna make sure he ties himself down to something. So here's how we're gonna do this. The storm's incoming. We're breaking the party up. One versus four. One of you will be working with Martin to keep course so you don't go a 180 and start going in the wrong effing direction or go 90 and end up who knows where. The other four of you are going to batten down the hatches and literally wrestle this storm with this boat. So the one who's going to work with um, uh, Martin, survival check. The other four athletic checks and it's the total value from all four of you that determines success, not individual numbers. Okay, if it's going to be survival, yeah, Rufus is going to... No. <laughs> I will take the survival check. Yeah. Okay, Ian's going to go for survival check. Okay, good. Woodward is going to go up with Martin. The other four of you, you're doing athletics checks? Yeah. Cool. There is a combined DC that you all have to beat. I'll tell you what it is before you give me your numbers. So roll it. Write it down. Keep it tight. I have Ian. a, sh you know, I you, have you assurance got... in survival, which means I naturally have an 18. Oh. Mm -hmm. Was the roll below an 18? Oh, you don't need to roll with assurance. You get no, to take I'm... a 10. I, don't know, I, I was just curious if you rolled like a 3 and went, no, nah, I'm taking assurance on this. Oh, no, I don't fine. even know if I'm allowed to roll before to figure out. I just know that I can take a 10, so I did. That's fair. If I can roll to see if I can get higher, I definitely will. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I think rules is written. You can't, but I'm feeling kind of saucy, so let's do that dice roll and see if you get something better than 18. I just used my hero point, and I only got one point higher. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. nope. That 18 is really pretty. Okay, Love we'll keep it. that 18. All right. So, everyone, don't come with the artist yet. The other four, right? Here's the drama comes in. As the four of you are working together to keep these sails up, as Morel and Tobias are trying really hard to keep the rudders going, the combined value of you four has to beat, I'm sorry, meet or beat a 75. Oh. So let's see what you all rolled. Starting with Rufa. Rufa, what was your athletics check? A little on the low side for me. Got a 16. 16 to start. That's what, 59 more to go? Alona, what do you got? Seven. Seven. That's a total of 23. Sam. I'm gonna use another hero point because that roll was too low mm -hmm. for me being the one with the highest athletics here, so. We're doing it again. No, we're switching the dice. Different dice. Mm -hmm. We're doing it again. Come on, rainbow dice. Okay, it's better. It's better. Calculator. That's a 23. That's what I am talking about. So by that powers combined, that is 46 out of 75. Is it enough? Who knows? Go either way. Shonibus. 24. Four. I gotta do some quick math here. 47. Hold up. 47 plus 7 is 54. 54 and 16 is 70. You were five points. So we got a 16. Short. Yeah. We had an 18 for mine, right? You. We had a... No, you were doing survival checks with Martin. Ah, yeah. Well then. 16 plus seven is 23. 23 and 23 is 46. 46 plus 24, 70. Five points short. The sail breaks off the rigging 
as the storm overtakes you. You hear Martin going, it's a little broken. We can fix it. We can fix it. I need everyone to give me uh, acrobatics checks as the uh, storm overtakes you and tries to throw you off the boat. 28. Okay. Hero Quinn again. I'm, I'm getting low on him, but I still got him, so we're going to do it. Okay. Taking this dice, we're going to yeet it over there. We're going to use a different one. Okay. Alona, what was your what was your acrobatics? Because I see a sad face. Seven. A seven. Okay. Okay. Oh, an 11. An Not 11. Better, but okay. It's an 11. No. That helps. Okay. Uh, PJ. Mm hmm. Uh, when you have nothing, my my brain is, is is fogged. I'm trying to think if Alona can pray really quick. <laughs> she have time to pray. <laughs> Maybe. Rufa, what's your what's your athletic uh, acrobatics? Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Uh, Sam, what was your acrobatics? Also twenty five. Twenty five. Nicely done. And Woodward, what is your uh, acrobatics? Nine. Nine. Okay. Now. I think Woodward just sees this kind of approaching and he's like, <sighs> he knows he doesn't have it. <laughs> he's just getting ready to get taken off this boat. <laughs> okay. So I have been uh, sent a secret special note that Reap Psyche wants to use their hero points to help the situation out. And here's what I will allow. But first, allow me to set the scene. As the water and the winds crash upon your boat and Martin swears that the sail can be repaired, Woodward and Alona lose their footing and are thrown easily 60 feet off the boat in a massive, violent blast from the storm. Everyone else is able to either get themselves in an advantageous position, grab a hold of something, duck or balance, and they are able to keep themselves on the ship as the healer and the druid <clears throat> thrown take the feet off. The water <clears throat> splashes as their bodies hit hard. With Reef Psyche using that hero point to save the heroes, I'm going to need Alona and Woodward to make a religion check. I was like, shark mode activate. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Uh. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Woo! So close. It, oh, man. Oh, man, I got 28. <laughs> oh. Very nice 28. Woodwork, what'd you get? I got an 18. All right. Uh, tabletop rolls. So happy to have you here for the raid. You came just in time. As the water crashes, everything starts turning deadly, silently, still. And you see this hooded figure start to walk through the reality of the water itself. Not like they're wet, not like they're moving through the water, almost like they're in, shall we say, an aquarium, looking through the glass at two heroes slowly drowning. But then they take out their hand, and a hand greets theirs, and they're just bringing someone along and this someone looks to them and nods and says, I have it from here. And the hooded figure nods, his little two finger salute and says, see you next week. <laughs> As they walk off, the one who takes the hand looks at you both and says, the waters are for fishes, not for people. He pulls out a trident, his long flowing sea foam hair whips behind him as he starts moving it in a circle. And with a giant hand, you are now encased in a bubble as Hast, God of the Sea himself, spits you back onto the boat. And as he starts rising to the sky, he raises the trident high and he says, let God, man, and devil know this sand sea is not ours, but the will of chaos of this plane. As the king of these seas and defiler of the deep, I hereby declare this boat is not for harm. And he slams the trident on the seas and the water 
slowly descend to stand. And half looks to you all and he says, if you see my wife, tell her I love her. Until then, please, don't die. We all have a, uh, a vested interest in you. And then he vanishes. So half is just picking favorites now. I see how it is. Tries to drown me. It's fine. I'm Did- fine. <laughs> Did he do the finger guns? Hey, I saved you, okay? Did he do the finger guns? <laughs> Did half just do the finger guns and then leave? Important PJ. We need to know. Listen, listen. They're finger crossbows, and yes. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I guess yeah. we hit the deck, right? We're back on the ship. Get back on the ship. The water starts to slowly relax. Not only does the storm go away, the water goes away, almost as if a gentle ramping and the water parts. And then your ship is back in low tide, AKA the sand sea is back to the sandbar. I think uh, Woodwork kind of sputtering. He's just kind of down on all fours, you know, just looking at the deck. He goes, okay, Alona, yeah. I get the cleric thing. I get it. I get it now. It's good. Yeah, these guys are pretty. These, yep. Okay. Yeah, except I, I've never... <coughs> she's also spitting up water. Never heard of the the person that was with half. I've, I've never heard of them before. <laughs> You know, I, I would be worried about it if I wasn't on the back on the boat. You know, I, I feel like that that's a, we can cross that later. All right. So, with the with the seas calm down, you're back to kind of the, the unfortunate reality of a baking desert. When the low tide comes in and you're on the sandbar, the sandbar is basically like a Sahara desert, and it's just miserable. Now you're dry and you're hot, but you don't have two like 100 200 300 foot walls of water trying to kill you and break you meanwhile martin is just laughing uh day passes into night you are given a chance for downtime if you wish with any of the npcs or players uh by the way uh woodward before you're thrown clear you you can just hear this was earlier you heard martin mentioning a lot of like you won't let me die that was the promise He's gonna chase me forever, and I'll chase him to the ends of the earth, but he'll never let me die. Um, the one thing Woodward would like to do before he speaks to Martin mm-hmm. is I would like to take ten minutes to refocus, Absolutely. just to get that little uh, point back for my wild shape. Um, and like regaining himself, he kind of hears these words that Martin said beforehand. He walks up to him. Hey, uh, uh, Martin. Um, look, we've met a lot of a lot of different fellas that have been involved in one way or another with uh, a, the gods. Who, who are you talking about? Who won't let you die? No, 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 no. Is that a god that keeps me alive? No, I'm still. He's a big, deep, ancient bastard. He won't play many names. But that's for later. You probably won't have to meet him. Probably, probably will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, uncertainties as they are. But but if we do meet him, what would I call him to refer to him under his proper name? Just to, you know, be real nice and proper about it. Oh, I'll give him a proper herald when you meet him. But it's there, don't worry. He, he probably won't even show up. We'll just keep working on the boat. Look, I fixed the sail. Drop it. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, bud. Um, <laughs> I'll, uh, you know what? Yeah, if we meet him, you go ahead and introduce us, uh, and uh, I hope it all goes well. Oh, of course. I mean, come on, of course. It'd be great. It's all then. I'm going to go work on the sail. You have a really good evening, boy. And he just kind of like <laughs> gremlin walks away from you. <laughs> um, As Woodward sees him 30 feet away on the other end of the boat. Yeah, good, good evening. 
okay. And just like walks the other 10 to the other side. <laughs> um, for Rufus' downtime actions, mm -hmm. I think for the last two days, he knows where everybody in the group has been working on parts of the ships. Mm -hmm. So what he's going to do is take some rope and tie some like hand, like, you know, like safety rail things just to make sure at least attempts so we don't fall off the boat so easily. I'll tell you what, uh, give me a... Crafting? Mm, that's to build the rope. You want to make the knot. Give me a sleight of hand check. Uh, or a thievery. <laughs> uh, yes, a, a give me a thievery. Sorry, give me a thievery oh, okay. check to uh, basically make the knots. Oh, okay. And okay. what this will do is, if you get a high enough DC, uh, we'll, actually, no, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, Rufa did it really, really shoddy like. Is that a one? Yeah. You, you, oh, Barton is just looking at your knot work and he's like, You're lucky I need you. I throw you over my boat for crappy knot work. If anybody has an off day. <laughs> And right, right. this is actually a very, very nice knot. It's very, very safe. He pulls on that knot and it completely unravels. That is exactly what Rufa is attempting to do. Mm. That's what the second crew did. And that's why they're the second crew. Uh, and unless anyone else has any other downtime actions, uh, we'll be moving on to day three. Jonavis is going to show Rufa how to properly tie a knot. <laughs> no, she's just bitter. Oh, okay. After yeah. saving her life and giving her a present? <laughs> that present? She's like, this is this is rude. Rude. She could hate you. Still wearing it, present, though. She, yeah, she could hate you, but the present just turned it down to her being bitter. She, You've like, effectively you become friends. <laughs> this is how she makes friends. Come on, she's teaching. Rufa's gonna be a good student gonna learn so like this and like the bunny goes into the hole and then you just like pull boom there done simple Rufa as that does like that and somehow thing. it catches on fire yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you try to do the loop it swoop it pull and you just end up making like i don't know like a a, a, a zip gun out of it yeah All right, give me a thievery check uh to basically tie these ropes up with with great alacrity and uh subtlety both of us or just uh Shonibus? Just Shonibus. Okay. 28. Cool. So, um, as you guys basically spend the rest of the night uh, trying to fix uh, the, the handhold situation, the 28 confirms that everyone's going to get a plus one to reflex saves, acrobatics checks, and other things in the event that the elements try to knock you off the ship. Um, so, nicely... Done. It is now day three. No sailing checks necessary, as there seems to be easy sailing. The rudders are working. The, sa the sail is catching the breeze just perfectly. It seems to be very, very, very relaxed. I need everyone to make a perception check. Here we go. <laughs> 21. 21? Okay. Mm. I got a 27. 27? Okay. 11! Oh. Okay. I also got a 27. 27, and Sam? 22. Okay. You're kicking back, relaxing. Morel and Tobias are having kind of a heated argument at this point in time. Um... Uh, you hear just Tobias be like, listen, Acadian, the next time I want your opinion, I will go over to you and, uh, I don't know, what, insert insult here, shut up, and, AK and you see Morel go, you know what, I'm absolutely sick and tired of your mouth, little man, I have about 60 pounds of muscle and about 8 inches of weight on you. Last I checked, we only asked you to come on this boat, and if I throw you really hard, maybe you disappear. And Tobias just looks at me and goes, disappear me, I might come back with a vengeance. Thomas. And as they're just bickering like two idiots, suddenly 
Rutha and Woodward. You spy something weird about the sand. It's moving. It's not like the shimmery before in the first day. It's churning. And the churning is following you. Until suddenly, the sand breaks. Like when a wasp comes out of the nest with fury, how the sand kind of just comes out of the ground in this swell. And then suddenly it breaks so much, the land swells, stops, and coming out of the sand is a long neck with chitinous skin layered, and the very end is nothing but a mouth with teeth bigger than spears. Roll initiative as a sandworm of the sand seas has breached to feed on you today. Really quick, Rufa looks over at Woodward and goes, you know, Rufa should be surprised. He's no longer surprised now. Uh, Yeah, I I wish I was too, but I feel like this is just, this is what turns people into Martin. (laughs) Agreed. All right, everyone, roll uh initiative the worm already has his initiative rolled well their initiative already rolled so i just need yours really fast 10. all right 10 for ilona 17. All right sam has a 17. shonibus slash kylie what's yours 24. 24. nice ian what is yours um we're using perception correct uh yes 19. 19, thank you. And uh, Mike, what is yours? Michael? I don't know why I always roll low on perception. Uh, I got a 14. All right, that's a 14. Okay. I feel like Rufa doesn't get out of bed for anything less than a 20. Right? <laughs> unless, it's, unless it's initiative for some reason. Fair. I rolled a four. Still, you're taking it all in before the fight. Yeah. Right. So, as you guys, as everyone in the group prepares, the sandworm opens its maw and starts to move at you. And that is where we'll take our five minute break. When we come back, it's the heroes of Edge of Legend versus the sandworm that is trying to eat them. We'll be back in five at 923, coming back straight to the action. See you at 923. We love you. We love you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for letting us have that five. I hope you liked this journey so far. And day three is going to be kicking off with combat. Initiative's already rolled. Joe, when you get a chance, play that. Forget your training music. Let's get right into this fight. So. Yo, it's like a moment. One moment. We'll be right with you with the sound. In the meantime. Cool. All right. So. Boop, boop. Can we just go into like starting character mode and like video games? <laughs> Who's your character? I'll be Wolverine. He's always like, he's always doing little these weird little boxing. shimmies every single time, no matter the video game. We got hands full what... of knives. Ooh, what would our starting soon character screen look like if like you were your character? character? Ooh, yeah. Ichi would be like. Dum. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think Alona would probably be in prayer pose like. Would what yeah. would you do exactly what I was just doing is slowly tilting this cup up. Ufo <laughs> mm. 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 would be like just face palming. <laughs> <laughs> the only movement is his head subtly back and forth. <laughs> Shionimus would be like just docked of an arrow and just like. Yeah, oh, like Doc Arrow, eye roll. Doc <laughs> Arrow, eye roll. Ex- absolutely. All Somebody right. make us a video game. <laughs> I'll be down. We could talk like making a fighting game and have like that's not a big moves. ask at all, <laughs> <laughs> right? It goes. I mean, been, there like, are RPG makers now. Uh, the same. Oh. Okay, so uh, why don't we get things rolling? And when the sound kicks in, I'll just kick in mid combat. But that being said, the worm is gonna go first. Oh, I'm playing my song. Okay, so 
the worm roars this deep bow and you can feel spittle coming out of its razor-like sucking maw it will do its leaping attack action as it jumps from one side to the other side of the boat i'm gonna need everyone to make a reflex save as this thing's mouth literally crosses the entire deck of the boat Oh. Okay, you have a plus one to reflex. Ooh. This is literally the only reason I do drinking contests as a book board. It's because it's either going to be a fortitude or a will save. Not a reflex save. 30-20. 30-20, okay. 30-20. 30-20, okay. 21. Not today, worm. Ooh, mm -mm. not today, worm. All right, so 20, 20, 21. Uh, Ian, what'd you get? 18. 18, okay. And uh, Rufo, what you get? 22. 22, okay. So this is a basic reflex save, so it works as a basic saving action. If you make it, you take half. If you crit critically succeed, you take none. If you don't make it, you take full damage, and if you critical fail, you take double. So I believe we had one person that didn't make it, everyone else saved. So here's what we are going to do. I'm gonna roll this damage right quick, and we're gonna go from there. Okay. As he leaps across the boat, dragging his dagger-filled mouth, spitting green bile all over the place, uh, the damage was 15. If you succeeded, you take half of 15. If you failed, you take 15 uh, slashing damage as its mouth just goes across. That being said, Woodward, you were the one that got under the 20, correct? Just barely, though. Just, just barely. Just barely. Barely. A little bit. Yeah, just a little, a little bit. A little bit. Let me make an athletic check. Mmm. That's worse. <laughs> I got a 14. Okay. So the snake, you run the boat, right? Yep. <laughs> Woodwork is missing. Oh, The man. sandworm... Bear burrows in the sand, pops back up. You can see the upper torso of Woodward stuck in the mouth of the worm. You're grappled, and you are then swallowed into the mouth of the beast. Inside the creature, you are slowed one and blind and take persistent damage, I will tell you, on your turn. But... If you wish to punch your way out, or if someone hurts the creature while you're inside of it, there's a certain value, in which case you may be, uh, shall we say, replaced back on the boat. So, that being said, the worm has done its turn and its damage. It is now Kylie's turn. Um, uh, uh Marcus Bray. I want that bonus. Mm -hmm. Uh, where's my dice go? And then I'm just gonna fire. I'm so scared. Uh, 20. The 27 to hit. Yeah. That's a hit. Google, Google. Oh, I add something else. Hold on. I'm, I'm never this one prepared. It's okay. When a big, when a big grotesque worm eats your druid friend, it happens. I'm right. not dead yet. Too stressed. Yeah, it's... Yet. Okay. Oh. And then, and then. Yeah. D4. Where's my D4? 11 points of damage. 11 points of damage. Woodward, you are still in the beast's body. Getting snuggy. <laughs> Getting comfortable. <laughs> Getting used to it. Like a hug. Yeah, yeah, it's like a really nice hug. Uh, all right, Shunibus, how many actions do you have left? Uh, Mark Prey is one action, right? I believe so, yeah. Let's just fire again. Okay, minus four. 
But we're gonna use one of my rings, so I... Okay. Ooh, that's not great. That's okay. 19 plus... 21 to hit. Meet to beat, that hits, roll damage. Sick. Two. I'm, I'm sorry, I missed it. How much was the damage? Two. Two. So sorry. I I heard two, and I was like, I think she's still doing math. I'll wait. Uh, I <laughs> apologize. I'm not oh, trying to be rude. I honestly thought. Okay. Oh, wait. I forgot to add one dice. Hold on. That's just king. Seven. My bad. Okay. Okay. All right. You shoot another arrow, and what looks like the worm is starting to regurgitate, it's almost like fighting against spitting up Woodward. It calms the throat muscles and slowly starts to drag Woodward into its belly. Next up. Uh, Michael, what is your dexterity modifier? It is a check. Two, plus two. Two. Ian, what's your dexterity modifier? Uh, plus two. <laughs> not making this easy on me. Okay, fine. Uh, Michael, I'm... what is... Hmm? Roof is not currently being swallowed. Michael, what's your charisma modifier? My, my charisma? Yeah. Plus three. And what is your charisma modifier, Ian? A zero. A zero. Okay, we'll go with Michael. And Michael, please. Uh, it's your turn. All right. Um, I am going to use the Buzz Dragon. Mm -hmm. uh, it's free action right now. Um, at using it actually activates a uh, known weakness. So okay. I'm gonna see if I can do a recall knowledge check on it. On a sand worm. Twenty. Twenty. And that goes against what stat exactly? Um. Well. Essentially, if I critically succeed on a recall knowledge check, I notice a weakness and gain a plus one circumstance bonus to attack. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, I'll, I'll say this. You've never seen one of these before in your life. Mm -hmm. But you have been fighting a lot of creatures a lot taller than you. Yeah. And that's That's been kind of consistent. So the one thing you know is this. If everyone can just focus fire as fast as possible, you can burn this thing down in the Battle of Attrition. Plus one. Okay. Uh, Rufa is gonna shout out, everybody, try to focus your fire on it all together now. Which means, I think, since I let all my allies know, everybody gets that plus one until their next attack roll against the subject. Okay. Uh, and uh, now plus we, one to we, hit? Yeah, plus one to hit. Plus one to attack roll, yeah. And now going to my actions, one of them will be Rufa's going to tie a rope around himself. A long, a very, like a ship rope. Keep a long ship rope. Okay. Um, then use one inter interact action to pull out a one of his flask of uh, moderate acid that he bought while in a grip upon a bear. Okay. And my last action is he's going to actually try to get to get the sandworm to notice him so he can get swallowed with, you know, go help his buddy. He's softer on the inside. I have to go inside of him. Yeah, sure. Give me a uh, give me a persuade uh, diplomacy check. Give me a All diplomacy right. check to look like the most tasty morsel this thing could possibly. Can I do a performance to like pretend to be a hot dog? Well, a hot dog's a little difficult. I don't I don't know about that acting chops. But please give me a performance check to All swoon right. the massive sandworm. Hot dog dance. <laughs> that just reminds me of the song from. Uh, what's it called? I don't remember. It's a musical where she has to become an ice cream cone in a song in an acting class, and it's really annoying for her. Anyway. 25. 25. I do the Oscar Mayer hot dog dance. All right. I will... I will... Rules allow that now the sandworm has to focus on you for its next turn. Uh, okay, so that being said, Ian, you... 
now that you are in the nasty uh, system mm -hmm. of this beast, you take uh, four bludgeoning and three acid damage as its its body starts compressing <laughs> and digesting you. Four bludgeoning, three acid. Okay. Um. Ooh. I'm going to try to save any of my animal forms to get back onto the ship, I think. Um, so I'm first going to start off with a acidic burst, which is a five foot around. Mm -hmm. um, and they, the worm gets to make a basic reflex save. Okay. When I'm inside of it. Yeah, I will Great. actually, technically speaking, it's grappled. I don't believe it can make a reflex save. Uh, oh. So it just... It just happens. Great. Um, then now I'll roll damage. I don't think there's anything towards uh, failing or anything because it just can't make it. So um, it takes eight points of damage. Uh, it is a five foot, like, basically emanation. Nice. So all around you, right? This acid erupts. So as it happens, you start to hear this, like, the horrible sound. So if you have uh, some sort of sympathetic gag reflex, warning. You start hearing this. Oh, oh, well, hey. Oh, 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 just rising from like 30 feet below you. As you can tell, every muscle in its body is now trying to get rid of the entity that's causing acid in its body. Acid. I yes, that's I that's the entire joke of me casting acidic burst, heartburn. Um. um uh, next up, uh, I think it's still your turn, Ian. Does it feel like I'm actually making progress? Uh, yeah, you could tell that on its turn, it's probably gonna to spit you out of its body. Okay. Um. I think then at that point, uh, that's two actions. I want to, um, I'm actually going to ready a wild shape okay. when I get spit out. Cool. Okay, so In case I'm not action. back on the boat. All right. Cool. Prepping that action. We'll make a note of that. So I'm making a quick note to myself. Okay, next up we have Sam. Okay, very Concern. important question. What size class is this worm? Good question. This is a huge worm. Okay. How many sizes up from large is huge? It's the next size up, so it would be medium, large, huge. Okay. And colossal. So, uh, okay. Ichi is going to, let's see, find a roped tie around her waist and get on the edge of the ship. He's going to dive and it's attempt to land upon this worm and grapple him because she is a titan wrestler. <laughs> Tell me what a roll. All right, so athletics. And you could, dear God, you could in theory hip toss a huge sandworm. Well, hey, you know what? That's what we're here at Edge of Legends. That's what we're about. We're about making legends out of people. So let's do this. Just reach out and nab it. Mm -hmm. Ooh. This this kind of low. Should I use? I use another hero point. I got him. I got him. You get one a day. Well, technically one a game, but you know, I'll give you one a day because I think you might need it. <clears throat> did they wait? Did they roll? They roll over, right? Uh, technically no. Every game's a oh. new set of one starting, but it's Damn, okay. I was like, I don't have that. Oh, I I would die if I don't. Wrong. <laughs> I'll yep. stick with the roll that I did then because. I've been doing that there. wrong this whole time. That is going to be a 17. 17. Hey, you know, don't feel bad. 
Pathfinder 2 has some amazing rules, and sometimes, like, with all the other systems, I get it. It's all good. Uh, but the fort, the, sorry, the grapple of 17 will miss, unfortunately. So you grab it, but you can't, you can't move it, you can't, you're basically now stuck with it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do I have, with, with what I did, do mm -hmm. I have actions left? Um, I'll give you one more action left. As I fail to grapple this worm, may I make a attack against it? Sure. It's Nintendo flat-footed. All right. What's the, uh, what do they call that? What's, what's the penalty for that? Uh, well, the good thing about flat footer is it's going to take a minus to its AC. So it is easier to hit because in theory, it can't really move away from a creature that's right on top of it. Got it. Got it. It yeah. is flat footed. Come on, dice. That's a, it's a 12 to hit. 12 to hit. Unfortunately, that will miss. Uh, basically, you, you, do, you don't have enough momentum. The axe just kind of like lands or maul, whatever your weapon is. Hits the chitness, the, the chitness body. Just kind of like, doesn't, can't get any purchase. No clean or powerful stroke. Uh, and that is your turn done as you have grappled the sandworm. Uh, you know what I mean. Ungrappled. Um, Failed to yes. grapple. You're, you are, you are, uh, mm, Sydney, your turn. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? Uh, well, firstly, I'm going to use my Divine Lance to eat at its open mouth. All right. Hold it. Uh, mm, uh, 20, 21. That hits. Sweet. Uh, awesome. Yay. Awesome. Um, that is seven points of damage. Okay. And I have one action left. I'm going to try and use command. Okay. Uh, uh, it has to make a will save against my spell DC. I don't know how, I don't know. Sorry. What's your, what's your, uh, what's your spell DC? 18. 18. It was 18. Uh-huh. Just command? Does the thing need to know English? Or common? As long as you can basically, I think, communicate with it in some way. Heck yeah. Question. Okay, cool. Great. Yeah. Go for it. So, I want you to tell me what the command you're giving the creature is. Spit out woodwort. Okay. Uh, one word. One word, what are we gonna say? Spit. Uh, the creature rolled a 17. Yeah! So, uh, ended that round, actually I'll say this, before his round, he just immediately, uh, like, just, and you see Woodward just, uh, Woodward, give me a free acrobatics check to not take the fall damage of being spit out of a huge sandworm. My prepared action means I get to turn into a bird. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Because you prepared. Yes. All right. So, and then you just. Yeah. <laughs> it's immediately, you just see Woodwork face of panic, turns into sparrow, and then fly, and then keeps flying. Wait, wait, wait. African or Europeans is important. I'm unladen at this point, so I'm not oh. super worried about it, but right. I can make it back to the ship. Well, unladen, you don't take any of the speed penalties. Okay, right. so that's fair. Okay. Uh, so the top of the next round, uh, the sandworm, uh, quite angry that it has spat once, decides to spit twice. Um, so, I'm going to roll to hit the area of a, basically 30 feet in the middle. As he spits this, Ooh, he might actually... Does a 22 miss any of you? Is this 30 feet in the center of the ship? Um, yes. I'm a bird, so it does miss me because I'm not on the ship. I'm Misses off the ship. I was, a, I was a bird at the time. You were a bird at the time. You're currently wrestling the sandworm. 
Uh, you were still in the boat. Okay. So, let us roll. I believe it's Rufa, Alona, and Shionibus are still in the boat? Yep. Yeah. All right. You both take... I'm sorry, you all three take really not a not a bad day's work. You take four acid damage. Yeah, you take four acid damage. Okay. Not bad. Uh, that's one action. With its other action, it's going to try to uh, and try and bite Shionibus. What about the delicious hot dog? <laughs> oh, you're right. No, you're right. I promise. Okay, so he goes to bite the hot dog, the delicious <laughs> Got you, Rufa dog. No, thank you. I need to be reminded of that. I totally forgot. That's my bad. So he is going to uh, try to attack Rufa with a hit of 18. Does 18 hit you, Rufa? Actually, it doesn't. It doesn't. <sighs> it tries to bite you, and you feel this, this, this the, the whole world get dark, and you smell the awful putrid smell of, like, just dirty sand and coarse rocks and like bile and, and a body you know like the inside of a creature that just lives to eat things but and it's like a really crappy like a uh, uh, claw game because as he starts bringing up his mouth it goes and once it passes your head that's when it closes and it misses you entirely I put a uh, vision also Rufa is kind of like the road runner in the cartoon where he's like looks up beep beep then one leg uh, with its last action, it's going to take the penalty and it's going to attack again. Uh, it's going to try and... That wouldn't be that stupid. But it's going to try and attack Rufa again. Does a 21 hit you? It meets. That's a hit. Okay. Full damage. You're going to take 18 damage, and you're automatically grappled in his mouth. As it... Now, that being said, Kylie, your turn. Okay, it's still marked as prey, but I still get precision. Um, oh, goodness. Uh, how close am I to the mast? Uh, about 30 feet. I'm just going to try and s move up that as far as I can. Okay. Hoping to get to the crow's nest. Or straight up. Okay, in that case, give me an athletics check. Uh, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, athletics? Mm -hmm. 14. You'll be moving at half your speed. You can only get about halfway up, unfortunately. Ooh, that's rough. Can I use my action to just sprint up there and just use that as my action? Uh, if you want to use a second action to do so, yes. Sweet. We'll just do that. Okay. Um, so you are now at the top of the crow's nest. You are at, like, equivalent to the shoulder level of this massive worm. Sweet. Uh, we're gonna fire and hope for the best. Oh, so close to being in 20. That's gonna be a 26 to hit. 26 to hit, okay. It With hits. Five damage, that's not great. Any damage is good damage. True, true. Right. All right. Five damage. Uh, also, thank you. Uh, thank you to, uh, I believe it was Penguin Chan. Of course. We love you, Celestial Penguin. Penguin Chan gave us a quick follow on coffee. So I just want to say thank you so much for being the first person, to my knowledge, to follow us on coffee. Thank you. Love you as always, Penguin Chan. Uh, five damage done. Um, one second as I tally that math very fast. Okay. I don't know if it, this helps in case if it goes into critical hit. Mm -hmm. But you do have that plus one, uh, Chonibus, from uh, the bonus. And it'd be 27 yeah. to hit. Not a critical yet. Okay. Not a dirty crit. Then. Now, next up, Michael. Yep. You're you're literally in the belly of the beast here. Well, you're in the, the, the mouth of the beast. You're not swallowed yet. What are you going to do? 
Um, well, last turn, uh, Rufa had uh, in his hand that bot that a uh, moderate acid uh, vial. Mm -hmm. So would uh, would he be able to kind of smash it? I guess I'm guessing if he's in his mouth, smash it down on the tongue. Yeah. Uh, roll to hit, get above the ten as you just basically oh. throw it right at your feet. If he's grappled, um, like. Woodward was. Does he really still need a roll? It... Yeah, you're hitting the area. Oh, okay. Basically, yeah. I mean, he's flat-footed. You're in his mouth. Just combined to get above a ten. Okay. I got above a ten. There you go. All right. What's the damage on that? Uh, let's see. I get a roll. That's ten persistent acid damage. Plus two acid splash damage. Okay, so it took. Did you say ten persistent acid damage? Yes, ten persistent and plus two acid splash. All right, and what does it take on the immediate impact? Ten as well. Um, it just says, it just says here, the bomb deals two d six persistent acid damage and two acid splash damage. Okay, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to count the splash damage as the immediate damage, okay. and I'll add the ten when the persistent would normally kick. Okay, cool. No problem. And uh, Rufa, with his, I guess, second action, mm -hmm. he's going to do an interact to grab now a, uh, what do you call it? A bottle of uh, Alchemist Fire from his uh, pouch, from his bag, okay. and does the same thing. <laughs> okay, uh, do the same thing. Uh, interact is one action. This will be the last action of your turn. Yes. Roll the hit, get above a 10. Yep, yep, yep. Let me just... Fire. Just means that Rufa's a spicy hot dog. Yeah, I'm a kabasa. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's picante bites at 7 Eleven. There it is. Nah, he would have been left out in the sun for an extra day. Mm, that's a good point. Okay, uh, after bonuses and all that, I think I got a 24. 24. That's still gonna hit. Uh, give me the damage for that. Alright. Here. Up, uh, That's eight persistent fire damage plus two fire splash damage. Okay. Oh boy. So we're just destroying him from the inside. Get him. So you smash them down one after the other. The first one Threw it on breaks. the ground. Throw it on the ground. And as you do, you see this liquid just spread out and it, it's, and it just starts to slowly uh, expand and it's bubbling, right? And the bubbling starts to fizz like uh, like soda when you put chocolate ice cream in it and the mm -hmm. foam just gets everywhere. And, it's, it's... and as you're doing it, the other one with fire, throw it down. And it's like in a movie when you light that match with the kerosene everywhere, it just immediately just burst out with this fully licking flame that matches the same area as the acid splash. Uh, the problem though, last I checked, you threw a splash weapon at the ground. If you, uh, if you're not careful, you might be in the middle of this damage as well. Now, true, if you true. want to, if you want to, I'll give you two choices. Number one, you take four damage now. Or two, you take no damage now, and on your turn, make a reflex save not to take 18 damage. I mean, I think I think I know which one I would take. I'll, I'll take the four damage now. Yeah. All right, take the four damage now. All right, there write that is. four damage on your character sheet. Now. I'm going to need some healing soon. <laughs> Ian. Inside the worm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ian, it's the little bird's turn. What's the little bird going to do? Right. Um, I just saw Rufa make a go of it by getting inside of this guy. The place I was trying to escape. <laughs> um, I think, um, yeah, uh, I'm gonna turn, as, as crazy as it is, uh, I can end it with a free action, so I'm basically going to land on the worm mm -hmm. back as Woodwart. Okay. And I am going to cast uh, 
fungal infestation. Okay. I just uh, putting my hands down on the worm. Do I need to make a fortitude save? Uh, yes, it is a fortitude save. So we're gonna giant worm could have great fortitude. It does have acid reflex at this point. Maybe it's fortitude save has gone down. Okay. Uh, what's the DC to beat? Uh, the DC to beat is my 19. 19. Okay. So he rolled really bad. He rolled a 17. Yes, okay, sweet. Um, it is a 15 foot cone. Uh, but I think it'd be pretty hard to miss when I'm standing on top of him. And there's at least more than 15 feet of him, so it's basically just like a nice chunk out Great. of his shoulder. Yeah. Uh, it is 2d6 persistent poison damage. So uh, he takes 5 damage up front. Oh, okay. And then the persistent, I believe I roll a second time, or is that... Uh, what does it say about the persistent... Like, how much persistent damage does he take? Uh, I'm going to check. Can I get back to you on that, just to make sure I get the rules right? Yeah, sure. Once you do that, let me know, because that's how much you're going to take. Uh, Absolutely. Also also, uh, uh, Reap, Reap Psyche, uh, thank you so much for the coffee donation. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so let me know when the persistent damage is because I need to know that before it's next turn. Oh, um, Sam, you're a go. You are still hugging this massive worm. All right. Ichi is basically uh, riding this worm. You see her eyes alight with spirit energy, and she's going to rage. And with the spirit rage pulsing through her, she will make an axe attack on this worm. All right. This worm specifically. Mm -hmm. All righty. Not bad, not bad. Calculator. That's 26 to hit. That will hit. Okay, give me that damage. Woo, max damage on the nice. D12. Ayo. Plus strength, press my rage. And I forget, I haven't been damaged by this worm yet, have I? Oh, I, um, I was. Yes. That's 21 points of damage. Okay. Axe to the center of the worm while I'm still riding it. All right. So riding that worm and, and swinging hard, like little Nas X going to hell, you just swing an axe right into this bad boy. Just call me by your what? name. <laughs> you <laughs> you, you dig it. I, well, so you dig a chunk out of this worm. As it does so, Rufa is almost immediately spit up by the worm uh, as it passed the ruptured point in one go. Um, it. I have those points for you. Yes. Uh, it takes um, five points of persistent poison damage. Mm -hmm. um, it has weakness one to fire and weakness one to slashing. Ow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We'll see if it does that. So it was one right, one round to, I'm sorry, one action to rage, one action to hit. Um, I'll say this, if you're gonna like, see, you're raging, you're striking. If you wanna stay attached to the worm, athletics check. If you wanna drop, acrobatics check not to take fall damage. Choice is yours. Or you can just attack one more time on the way down. Could I? Can I make an attempt to grapple him again? Yeah, give me another athletics check to grapple it again. All right. Maybe I'll help all y'all with your with your aim. 21. 21. Unfortunately, not enough to do anything with the creature, but you are maintaining your hold on its body. You're like, <laughs> and as you're pulling, you can feel 
what can only be described as a skyscraper of muscle fight against you, and you're almost about to get it, but then it kind of shifts its weight, and you can't quite move it. Sydney. Your turn. Oh, it me this time. Mm hmm Oh, yay. Um, well... <laughs> My third, my first thought was she's gonna punch it, and then I'm like, no, she's not. No, 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 <laughs> too close. Um, she's going to cast. All right, where is everybody in relation to Alona? Because Rufus so, just been spit out. Yeah, Rufus should be center of the boat. Ichi is directly on this the creature. Uh, Shionabis is on the uh, crow's nest, about 15 feet adjacent. Uh, and and Woodward is on top. Okay. Uh, the only person I can reach is Rufa, so I'm going to use one of my heals um, to heal him. One uh, d10 plus eight. Nice. Roll that real quick. Let's I need do that. that. I, I need it bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what am I doing? Uh -huh. da -da 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 -da. I need this guy. Okay. Also, I'd like to point out, we got the worm now has 10 acid, 8 fire, and 5 poison persistent damage on it. Oh, That's he's... what we're talking about. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm taking notes. He's, it's he's, a smart he's, sword. Rough. he's real rough. Um, that was, I just lost it. That was 16, uh, 13 points of for you, Michael. Yeah. Oh, that okay. 8 fire is also coming with a weakness 1 to fire. <laughs> Did want to throw in that axe slash Slashing damage weakness one. Oh, that's a good point. Hold on thank a second. Thank you, Reap Psyche. Ah, thank you, Reap Psyche. Okay. It's a great spell. So that's really, really good. My God. Right. Okay. So, uh, Alona, two actions to heal Rufo. Mm -hmm. You want to make the one action running over to him? Yes, please. Okay. So, you heal Rufo. I'm going to tell you all the tale, okay? This is what happens. With the combined 24 damage that it took with the persistent stacking of different things, <laughs> you see the worm, it spits out Rufa, it has this, it has Woodron's back just, just filling it full of this fungal infection. You have this, this, this dwarf just like leg locking it, just beating it, like chopping down a tree. Meanwhile, Shionabas is sitting there with, with the arrows, and you remember when Martin says, as he goes, eyes like a doll's eyes and you see them they're like they're like teeny tiny black and soulless you shoot them like like those marble eyes in a doll and then finally you see foaming out of its mouth green uh uh acid this red fire and this purple ichor just starts pouring out of its mouth like a garden hose as this creature just and then Wham, slams on the boat. Its its skin around its head just starts to like decay and just rip and pull back like a like a, a time lapse photo of a decaying worm in the in the in the forest. And it just screams as it slunks back into the sand and <laughs> its head bounces as it goes from constantly running at speed with you to dropping dead in the sand sea. Congratulations, you have killed with the had a negative 13 from persistent damage. Yes. This worm. That's so fun. Nailed it. <laughs> I, I think we found a battle tactic. That persistent damage is yeah. gnarly when you can stack it. <sighs> yeah. And it was different sources too. So if it was like, oh yeah, like I do this fire and then I do that fire. I'm like, no, only one. But I'm like, it's I, it's it's acid and it's fire and it's poison. I'm gonna have to allow it to stack. Very important question: mm -hmm. Is the worm sinking or is it like dead floating? Uh, as it lays in the sand, it's actually staying on the sand, much like it. Ichi, I'm gonna need you to make an athletics check. Oh no, oh. you're still on the worm. I thank you for asking me that question, Nietzsche. Wait. Uh. Did she tie didn't she say she tied herself? Oh wait. I, I did. I'm on the worm. Yep. And oh crap. I need <laughs> you to make well, if you want to use an animal shape, you can, but you can also make an athletics check or an acrobatics check. 
I did tie myself to the worm. Um, you said uh, athletics or acrobatics? Uh, athletics for you and athletics or acrobatics for Woodward. The difference being you are closer to the boat and you can just jump off with a great physical exertion, but he has to do a dive. So 13. 13. Okay. Get to you in a second. Ian? Okay. Um, you, uh, athletics, right, will work? Uh, athletics will work, yes. I got an 18. Okay. Um, can I hold my action or make a decision on what Woodward would do if I, however, I see Ichi handle the situation? <laughs> uh, technically, you are in the middle of jumping. So, ah, okay. no, unfortunately. But you do make the jump. Uh, you kind of slam against the, um, uh, the crow's nest and the mizzen kind of slide down a bit, but you're okay. You, you're able to eventually slow your fall. It's a little rough, hurts the ribs. But you're not dead and you're not severely wounded. Ichi, you jump. Give me one more athletics check to grab the edge of the boat. Twenty-two. Okay. As you come jumping off the worm, as it starts basically just getting left by this boat. You jump, you leap, and you start noticing that you're not going to land on the deck. And it's moving fast. As you reach out with your hands, you are able to grab with both hands the lip of the side of the ship, and your feet touch the side of the boat, and you're holding on the side of the ship as it is rocketing through the sand sea. You're going to have to make one more athletics check to get actually back up. You grab yourself. You're safe. But this is going to make a break. That's a 30. Yes. You throw one leg over and then basically do a pirouette and jump on the boat proper. And no one Three point left landing. Three point landing. Like the hero landing. The knees Who hurt, but it looks so sign good. This has the number 10 on it. Oh, oh the, the Grassette judge. Very hard to impress. All right. Good Eventually, question, PJ. Yes, answer? Um, are we like we're speeding past the corpse, or you are it is fading behind you? Oh, okay, yeah, Darn. so it is because it basically you're moving right uh -huh. and law of relativity as you keep going. So the snake, the worm corpse, long gone, day continues, goes into night, you're refocusing your long resting if you wish any downtime actions you can but next up day four i would like to heal some people i'm going to go down there no cry okay everybody huddle everybody huddle we're gonna everybody do take a knee everybody take a knee everyone take a knee <laughs> um all right we are going to heal everyone in a in a 30 foot emanation and I'm going to heal y'all 1d10. Oh, sweet. Y'all get 10. Ooh. Yay. Thank oh, you, he's Alona. Dead rest now. Yay. Oh my goodness. With everybody gathered, Rufus kind of withfully kind of looks back where the, the direction where the corpse of the sand snake is and just goes, it's a shame we left the corpse behind. We could have harvested. Uh, use a uh, the hide, the bones. I would like to experiment with that acid. Oh, Rufa. Always making an opportunity out of a dead thing. Uh, all right. So day four arrives. I'm going to need everyone to give me sailing checks. You're on the, the big sandy ocean. So I'm going to need athletics, acrobatics, survival, perception, or nature, your choice. Only one can be done per person. No redos or no, uh, no doubling up. Alona. Yes. Do you want, do you still want to try survival? You can do it. Is that your main? No, I'm, I'm just asking based off of our bonuses. I have, insh I have assurance in survival, but I don't know what your nature check is. My nature is better. My nature is a plus nine. 
Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I'll take survival then. So let me know when you roll it. Uh, raise your hand when you're done, just so I can make sure everyone is good to go. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Okay, so let's start off. Uh, let's see here. Athletics check. I'm guessing that's Ichi. Yes, that's a 24. Ooh, ooh yeah. Good to go. Acrobatics. 21. Okay, survival. 18. Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. Perception. 15. Okay. Nature check. 24. Teamwork makes the dream work. Teamwork uh, makes the sand boat work. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, Rufa and Ian, give me a D4. Yes. Oh, boy. Argo low. I didn't work. Damn it. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. I got, I got a four. A, I got a four. Ah. You got a four. Okay. That could be really bad or really good. <laughs> Joe, could you please play the end of the world again? Or edge of the oh. world? <laughs> <laughs> That's really it, guys. Really Campaign's really over. <laughs> Joe, could you please uh could you please play TPK by Ancient Monstrosity? Thank you. <laughs> so beautiful sand stretches before you. You've actually started to find a liking to it. Maybe it's because it's not currently being threshed and mauled by a sandworm to kill you or being whipped up into an actual storm that just stampedes across the horizon. Or maybe it's because you're deeper down the count, uh, continent past the, the midway shifting point and the sand actually looks like a fine, beautiful white powder. Like some, like the gods themselves took diamonds in their hands and crushed it and just sprinkled it for all to see. It's a beautiful, uh, uh, reflective, stand and it's very serene in fact you can even see the beautiful shimmering blue lakes of the water to your left and right just shining in the midday sun wait wait water why, why is it why is it coming at you so fast so far away a second ago it's getting higher oh. sun is gone the sky is not the blue and clouds, it is the blue of the sea. It is the gray of the ocean. It is the shadows, the beasts that lie in the deep. Martin starts to cackle again. It looks like it best to be battening down the hatches. We got another high tide coming in from the port on the starboard. Woo! I haven't been sandwiched since the third crew I lost died. Ha <laughs> ha! Wasn't that the most recent one, though? Oh, I suppose it was. You yeah, better be back down the hatches then, Missy, or else we're going to be, well, I, you're going to be crew four to go. Rufus going to just tie a rope around his waist. The same, he just ties a rope around his waist. He's just kind of sad. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I am so uh... sick and tired of this mother effing sand in this mother effing sea. <laughs> Everyone, give me reflex saves plus one with the tie as you're now literally battened down and you're just trying to survive. Everything else is already prepped. All right, I'm seeing some dancing. I love it when my players dance. Is that a critical 20? That is a nat 20 from a guy who can't make a reflex save. The gods have smiled upon you twice this evening. Yes. You're fine. Michael, what you got? I got a... 22. Perfect. Alona, what you got? You got a 12. Okay. Not, not perfect. Uh, Jonas, what you got? <laughs> 30. 30. That's, that's, that's a good number. Uh, Ichi, what you got? 19. 19. The old DC here. Everybody get ready to catch Alona. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Have a net. <laughs> yeah. So, so the water bombs one way and bombs the other and you can almost feel like the water itself is pulling back for another punch as the displacement makes the water rise again it's just one side after the other and on the first pass alona slides out of her ropes and gets lost in the starboard of thrust you can hear morel just go alona 
Meanwhile, the other arm of the sea starts battering against the, the thing until eventually the Lutu daughter herself is tossed off the side of the boat. And then you hear Tobias go, Oh no, the wrestling one, I suppose. <laughs> Damn it, Tobias. Wow. <laughs> Tobias is going to get that. He's going to get it. Uh, as, as your NPCs are alerting you to oh, your Oh no, the cheeky paladin. <laughs> oh no, the flirty one. No, wait, no, 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 wait, no, wait, save her, because I'm pretty sure we, she looked at me when I first met her ba back in Dunstan. There was like, there's a look, you know what I mean? Like, there might be something there. She was, I mean, she was really cute too. Save the cute dwarf already. What am I stammering for? I'm just going to look over at Woodward goes, next time, next, tomorrow, we do buddy system. <laughs> <laughs> but the question here is, who is going to break out of their safety holds to go after Alona and Itchy? All right. Uh, do you want NPC help this time? How about Ichi help? Ichi's gonna swim towards Lona. Okay, good. I like that. Ooh. Here's what we're gonna do then, because this is possible. If you guys wish to withhold your action, we can allow the players to try and attempt to save themselves. Okay. All right. Ichi, yeah. give me athletics check, minus four. That's a 21. Okay, okay. It's not easy. You're definitely moving slower than you'd like to be. But to be fair, you are literally swimming against two tidal waves. So, you know, I think it's a, it's still pretty impressive. One second. Alona, can you give me an athletics check? Minus four? Oh. Yeah. No! No! What? Oh no. Oh no. It's a zero! Oh it's an absolute God. zero. Okay. You start drowning. Now. Ichi. You need to rescue her as she is not only thrashing and she's exerting a lot of energy. Her mouth is open. She's taking in water. Last but not least, the absolute displacement of the water, the movement, and the fact that you're probably already 30 to 50 feet underwater. She's getting pulled in under tow. You need to save her. Sure. Athletics check to grab her. It went out of my, it went out, it flew out of my thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's 27. Alona, what's your fortitude, uh, plus 10? Uh, 18. That was one point away from a critical grapple. You grab her with ease. Legs hooked around, arms are still going for it. Here's the thing, though. Alona's taking a lot of water. Alona, give me a fortitude save to stop from basically losing consciousness as you're slowly drowning. Are you freaking kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Why? I got a net one. Oh my God. Even though normally speaking, you'd have about three, four minutes, maybe five or six minutes with just years of swimming training. You're fading fast. You are literally inhaling seawater. Your lungs are burning. Your stomach is churning. Your limbs are on fire, but also dead at the same time, numb cold and you pass out Ichi you now have a dead weight body in clinging in your legs from this point on you are back to a full negative four athletics check to swim with a dead weight body as two tidal waves are attacking your boat that's uh 21 Okay, 21 with the minus four. Yeah. On the top deck, you see everyone preparing to jump in after you. Ian has informed you that they've made an attempt to uh, tie a rope around Tobias. Tobias uh, complains a lot, but he doesn't seem to be stopping you. Morel, it looks like a dog who wants to go outside. He's, he's, just, he's just storming back and forth like, let me at it, let me at it. 
Sorry, <clears throat> let me add it. Let me. Add, I'll, I'll take my armor off right now. I'll go right in there. Everyone else is waiting by the ocean, the water. You start seeing the water lap along the side of the boat. The water starts to slowly overcome the side of the boat. Martin is starting to say, we have to let them go. Sometimes people fall out the boat. Sometimes they don't come back. Sometimes they never come back. And as he's starting to turn the rudder to speed through this horrible storm, you hear the loud gasp of a rock dwarf of Asma Khan as her face breaks the ocean. Now, they are within 15 feet of the boat. They are within saving. But they're not on the boat yet. Ichi, do you want to swim to the boat or do you want a line? Line. Who's going to help her with the line? That was the reason for the rope tied to Tobias. Are you going to throw Tobias or ask him to jump willingly? No, I'm going to throw the other end of the rope and now he's involved. He's called what's called an anchor. <laughs> so Tobias looks at the rope, looks at you, you cheeky little mountain man. He looks at the rope out in the water. He takes out a sword. He drops to one knee, slams a sword in the ground, and he starts praying to Minerva. Minerva, make of me a man not fleeting. Make me one who stands my ground. Make me a man who does what I say. Make me a man who makes up as proud. I will stand this line. This I swear. I will stand this line. I promise. I will give my life to this oath. I bleed this day. From now on, no more shall flounder or lose. Bring to me. Um, to, uh, is it is it Ichi or Pacific? I don't. Bring me the dwarf. You have a plus two, and then I flash check. So now you're at a minus two to grab the line and get in as he is just praying and trying to be an anchor. You did. Mm -hmm. Can I attempt to just tie the rope from the mast to Tobias? So no, now he's not only the anchor, he's also he's now the reel. Uh, I'm gonna say no right now just because he's already anchored. I think that'd be that'd be a little weird. But I love your heads up. Uh, Ichi, what you got? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. As you're thrashing about, as the body of a woman much taller than you, because you're like what five something and she's like five nine, so about nine inches. I don't know. You guys know your height. Five 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 zero. Sure. Point is, as the dwarf is dealing with a half elf, you start to break through. Your hands are reaching for the rope, reaching and grabbing. We are slowly going down under kicking back up and going down under until eventually your hand grabs the rope and the other hand grabs the rope and you feel almost like you are tied against a column and you start lifting yourself up hand over hand like some old training routine back in Osmocon. you're just climbing this rope you get to the edge of the boat that's when <clears throat> Alona makes it out of the ocean you get on the deck However, she's still unconscious. Her cheeks are pale. Her lips are blue. Tobias is still praying to Minerva to keep an oath to you to keep you alive. And because that he's the anchor. There's you three. There's Morel. Raise your hand if you want to do something. What do you want to do? All right, Michael, what do you want to do? Uh, can I attempt the medicine check? Medicine check for CPR? Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. I got a 25. Alona, give me a fortitude save with a plus four. I'm sorry, what was that? I believe I heard her say 22. Okay. I can't hear but you can't, right now. I can't hear you right now, so sorry. Weird. There we go. There you go. 22. Rufa is doing 30 chest compressions, checking. 30 chest compressions, checking. 30 chest compressions. As this happens, Ilona, you smell the burning smoke that you remember back in Aura. 
when the Holy Mother and Holy Father of your temple was putting all their money into a to a till, all the tithes that they saved, anything that they had that they saved up, they gave you to buy you a ticket to Cobbledale some months ago on a holy journey that they believed was so perfectly precise for you, chosen by the goddess that you really admired. And the smelling of that burning, almost like burning sage, so it starts kicking your nose again. And the whole temple fades and you see a woman on fire, with a smile on her face. And she looks to you and she says, Hey, buddy. You know, last time I checked, you're not done with your mission yet. So, um, give me one reason to give me one name, any name, say it out loud or say it in your head. Say one name. Curious. I, I want to know. I want to know if we're thinking the same person. Say it again. So sorry, you're muted. Still muted. So sorry. Why? I don't know. I that don't worked know. though. Yeah. Yeah. It did? yeah. What was that name? Scream. I think we're thinking of the same person, Afra. <laughs> we are. We're thinking of the same person. Hmm. Let's see if we're right. By the way, take a deep breath in through your nose, and as you do what she tells you. You start feeling something sharp catch in your lungs. And it just starts a horrible irritation. You start feeling a cough. Just, okay, just another big <coughs> deep breath. Wait those lungs open up. It's okay. <coughs> you can feel something deep in your sternum start to rise the back of your throat. You feel something wet. And then suddenly it just pops into your mouth and it's cold and wet and salty. And meanwhile, on this on the boat, everyone is around the probable drowned corpse of Alona until water starts coughing out of her mouth. <sighs> Woodward's just standing above you with like the electric arc spinning in between his fingers, like he's just about to like hit your chest if needed <laughs> if Rufa gets out of the way. Um, also, I don't know if anybody noticed, but I was basically doing it to, to the tune of the BG staying alive. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> that's the trick. That's when I had to do CPR. That's the trick. Um, you so you see everyone around you. You see Tobias with the rope, kind of giving you a cockeyed look. You see Morel like doesn't know what to do with his hands. He's just sharing daggers, just, just with intense pace and intention, anxiety. Everyone else, of course, with their own looks or expressions or feelings. But alone is alive. A little shaken, but alive. You're right, friend. I'm fine, I think. She's still coughing up a little bit of water. Thank you for jumping in after me. Oh, Alona, I, I kind of fell in with you. <laughs> Thanks for making it sound cool, though. And then Ichi just like falls on her back on the deck and is just like resting. Uh, everyone is allowed to do a downtime if they want. This is the end of day four as Martin just goes, oh, good, She's alive. Rufus gonna turn no livers Martin. for Martin, then mm, livers next time. And Martin just kind of trots off. Rufa looks at Martin really suspiciously and just goes, So, how much, how many more days of this th boat ride are we on? Hopefully, it's a little, it'll be around maybe three hours, maybe a three hour tour. He looks and he goes, No, no, but let me say that. Nothing's a three hour tour. Nothing. If anyone ever tells you it's a three hour tour, they're lying to you to take your money or your soul. Nothing's a three hour tour. And he, and he hobbles away. That being said, day five, you're on the ocean. 
it is actually a nice day at sea. You do your jobs, you do the rigging, you do the rudders. If you wish to have a quick downtime action with anyone, you can do that now on day five. Also, this is a long rest and refocused. I'm going to assume within the day you've been able to refocus gets to 10 minutes of your time. I am picking new spells as would work. Good. A moment. So the three HP uh, I still need to heal up from it's healed, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Hmm. Anyone have any downtime actions? NPCs, PCs, Martin, anything in question? Um, I think Woodward's actually going to walk up to Tobias. Sure. Um, and he's he's just kind of it's going to be real quick. He goes, "Hey, uh, hey, look, I know I didn't, I know I didn't ask you before I made you the anchor." And yeah, I know it, it's not, you weren't ready for the fight, but I figured we've had enough favor from God so far that if anybody was going to stick inside the boat, I was kind of tying them to the God that I knew you knew. So at the end of the day, I, I gotta, I gotta thank you for that. And I'm sorry I put you in the, put you on the spot. He leans into you and he whispers in your ear and he says, Mate, if I honestly didn't want to be the anchor, I wouldn't have let you tie me up. I know I come off as an absolute ponce, but sometimes the right thing is the right thing, eh? Right. Yeah. All right. And then he leans away and he goes, And don't you forget it, little man. I'm three times your size. I deserve three times respect. Now piss off before I piss on you. Don't think I don't know. You set your badger to piss in my bedroll. It still smells of mushes gushes, and I am not a fan, good sir. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's, it's on, it's on me. I'm so, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Hey, yes, I know what badger piss smells like. After yep. the third day, I, honestly, I was quite confused in the first. You cheeky little bastard. It would work, kind of walks away with a, a smile on his face. Uh, all right, anyone else have any downtime actions? Rufa. Uh, Rufa is actually now kind of suspicious about Martin. Okay. The, especially the three, you know, the, the three former crews. He's going to kind of spend some time with Martin. Just, you know, mm. he's to have like, just gonna have like you know shoot the shoot the, I I, I think I can say the word shit, but yeah, shoot the shit. Well, conversation twice, so no more yeah. less words for us. All right, having a conversation, <laughs> roundabout way of asking, kind of finding out what happened to the former crew, and also what to expect um to the port that they're going to be selling to. to. Okay, so he tells you basically in, in shorthand. The first crew, where we were all eaten by him. The second crew, they went insane around day five, uh, and half of them jumped overboard. Uh, and, the, and the other half, well, they they just died of dehydration. Uh, on, on, uh, and the third crew, the third crew, oh, they just went splay overboard. They were lost around day two, day three. I do the whole blade thing by myself, which I tell you, these old bones are made of steel. Koga steel. Um, but I'm old. I don't want to be doing this by myself. It's, it sucks. So, who, you know, right. Who exactly is him? And with, with that, uh, I'm going to use my ability of pointed question. Okay. Um, I asked a question that charms or needles someone in the right way, and uh, I could attempt a diplomacy check against the creature's will DC and the creature. So basically, I'm forcing him to answer the question. Sure. Give me I'm making that, sure he's uh... a lie. Yeah, give me that check. Ooh. Ooh, that's a good one. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. It's very, very good. He goes on a long rant that makes absolutely no sense. 
he keeps talking about the biggest bastard in the sea, sand or water. He keeps talking about this, this, uh, he keeps, he keeps spewing a whole bunch of different names from different cultures. So about all the different names he goes by and he just keeps talking about like, he is, he's given me the right to be on these seas. He's, he's far to me to stay here. He, he, and he gives you names. He gives you titles. He gives you horrible curses. That's all you get. Can I roll a recall knowledge occult on any of these names? Sure. Go right ahead. What is it? 25. You recall stories of creatures that defy logic. You recall old, old tales of creatures so terrifying that past civilizations thousands of years ago would would believe would be scions, avatars, children of ideas, entities, gods, lost or known. They're like, this is impossible. It has, it has to be so-and-so. And while you don't recognize any of these names, you're kind of starting to assume maybe maybe this thing this bastard he keeps talking about isn't somehow related to this idea that people have been saying that some creatures are so terrifying and big and logic defined that they are the children or scions of other concepts far lost to us okay and lastly since i have an open case thing i'm gonna use one of my open cases on the bastard okay okay <laughs> i will let that happen now Alone, I think I saw a little finger raised earlier. Do you have any downtime actions? Uh, yes. Um, I wanted to. I wanted to prey on it. Um, I wanted to thank Afra for helping save me and keeping me alive. And uh, I wanted to ask what exactly thinking of the right person did. Go right ahead. Okay. Uh, give me a religion check really fast. Sure. As you pray on it. Okay. Nope. My rules no. don't like me. They okay. don't like me. They hate me. That's like a 15. It's so meh. 15, okay. So you pray on it, you stay on it. Afra is saying... You get this 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 kind of you don't even hear Afra's, Afra's voice. You get this kind of subconscious reaction in the back of your head, and you're like, maybe you just had to think of something positive to will yourself through choking. In fact, maybe the entire religious experience was just your own subconscious trying to overcompensate for a fear uh, response and have your survival instincts kick in through your brain and just keep you alive. In fact, it's not so bad that you doubt. But it's so bad that you're starting to going, no, religious religion didn't play any part of this. This was science. This was my brain saving me for myself. Great. <laughs> Sweet. Awesome. Wow. Deep thoughts. Thanks. All right. Um, so if there is a reason for that, unfortunately, you don't know. Yeah. Any other quick downtime actions before? Yes, Shionbis. Uh, real quick, mm -hmm. after finding out that someone is after her home, mm -hmm. uh, she is going to send a quick thought into the universe, um, and I can't say that on the stream because we're not allowed. Um, just leave my family alone. Because I'm coming after you. Is this to Ravon? Mm hmm. Okay. You put that into the universe, and all you hear back is just a sigh. Just a. <laughs> Soon, princess soon itchy any downtime actions for you 
Ichi is going to sit on the boat, look at the sand, and then she's going to reach over board and try to like catch a handful of sand. Mm -hmm. Can she do such a thing? Um, I believe this time you're still in water mode. Oh, we're in water mode, not sand mode. Yeah. She's going to get some water then. Is it salty water? Very salty water. My All God. Right, she's going to look for some kind of like vessel. Just get, get some salty water. And uh, she's going to stealth. <laughs> You're going to stealth? I'm going to stealth behind Tobias. Oh, no. Okay. Give me a stealth check. 18. I don't know if character sheet really fast. I put my phone with the details. There we go. So it's an 18 stealth check. I'll tell you what. Why don't you tell me what you want to do while I'm confirming whether or not this works, and then I'll let you know how it happens. So what do you wish to do? So I'm assuming this is just like some random bucket that's used for like bailing out the ship. She just get some water. She's just going to sneak up behind Tobias. When mm -hmm. he's like polishing his sword or something and try to dump it on his head. <laughs> so the 18 that you rolled for stealth on Tobias beats his perception by one. And sure enough, you Gatorade him like he just won the Super Bowl. Just. <laughs> and as you deluge him, he just goes, <clears throat> Why? Why? And he's just, he's just staring into space, just absolutely frozen with the water that you poured on him. His hair Ichi. is all over his face. Ichi's gonna back away with finger crossbows and say, because you know my name. And he just... Yes, Ichi, I, I know your name. Okay, point made. Ugh. Oh, Never it's, call oh, me it's... the dwarf again. I'm sorry. Oh, now the water's in me trousers. Oh, no. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting real hot cold from everybody. Yeah. Hey, man, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> you suck. <laughs> <laughs> Eat a book? Okay, so, uh, Sam, you get a hero point. Because uh, that was, yeah. Uh, he he does later come up to you and he goes, I'm so sorry. Um, moving forward. Uh, and he whispers this to you and he goes, I'd like to understand. Uh, I understand that you go by Ichi. I also know that you'll go by uh, La, La Pacifica Dorita. Which name would you like me to address you by? Either one. They're both my name. Okay. The dwarf is not my name. Okay, good, good, good. I will make sure to try my best pay respect to your name and he walks away and goes and from now on everyone remember the dwarf is named Ichi so if you call the dwarf you get dunked on I suppose and he just kind of walks away that's right so uh, Morel is kind of checking on everyone uh, he's also really checking on Alona he's like He's, he's coming just like, listen, I, I just want to check on you. I know you probably have a, a long night ahead of you. Just, are you okay? Do you need any food? Do you need water? Salt water is not real water, you know. It's not supposed to be. Are you, are you okay? Morel. Yes. I'm fine. Okay. Thank you. Of course. I knew, you, I knew, you, I knew you're going to I'm sorry, what was that? No, what were you saying? What are you saying? No, I, I just knew you were going to pull through. Um, because you're just tough. Oh, mm -hmm. Good talk. I'm gonna go. Um, okay. Yeah. Fine. Hey, Woodward, let's get a drink, mate. Yeah, what? Drinks? Sure, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Too much water. I need something stiffer. Yeah, I got that. I don't actually have water on me, so... Perfect. Uh... I don't want any water in my mouth right now. So, day five is done. Day six happens. The water slowly seems to ramp again. It's not just dropping out the side. It just slowly lets you go back to sand 
and you start noticing something, the water isn't like ramping you down like with half control of the ocean to let you gently go back to sand. It's almost like the water can't stick to the sand at this point. It's almost the water is just wicking away from the sand. And it's almost as if just by some natural resource, it, this, it's just can't get purchased and the water goes away. You're back in the sand part of the sand sea. The desert stretches. And Martin kind of smiles a bit and he goes, the last leg of the trip. This is it. It's a nice, good time. Yeah, I'm. See, I'm worried because you're not concerned anymore. Um, you're. Hmm. That was the scanning. Nah. Oh. You see Martin start to come alive. He's here. Oh, you big terrible bastard, you're here. He runs to the back of the ship. And he just starts gripping the sides and he starts pointing. And he starts screaming. You asked me what his name was, you asked me who he is, you asked me who the bastard is. I present to you it. It goes by many names. The Great Devourer, the Evermore, Metzbatak Ford, Mon Bon Vermis. It is the scent itself. It is, it is the big white worm. My greatest nemesis from all of the abyss and the very core of the planet itself. You biggest bastard. You. That I've named Richard. Suddenly, the earth explodes behind your ship. It just starts sinking like an earthquake, a tremor ripping and devouring the earth behind your boat. And it's breaking one after the other as the boat continues to pour. And there's and there's Martin going, rise, rise, you big white worm, you bastard, Richard, rise! And suddenly, that awful noise you hear, you see a worm, like the one you fought earlier. This worm, but it is gargantuan. It puts its harassment to shame as it starts to blot out the sun and shadows the sky. Bursting from its chitinous body, you see millions of worms breaking from its form. And then, little eyes, little eyes, eyes start peering into the chitinous layers of its body as its maw opens wide. And Martin looks at all of you and he says, If you don't want to be the Farth crew to die, I suggest you haul your collective asses. Joe, play for me that other song I sent you. I believe it's... Mm, I'm blanking on it now. This is anticlimactic. Rufus going to look at Martin and just goes... And her goes, damn you, we... This was on purpose. He looks at you and he says... No, but much like that bastard that made a deal with me to keep me alive forever so long as I peep, take people across the seas. It's kind of inevitable. Now, run if you want to get to Asma Khan. Welcome to the chase of Richard. We're going to be doing a chase scene. You have... Oh, a few obstacles that are going to be coming at you one at a time. There'll be a flat DC to beat. The flat DC to beat is, of course, a fat, dirty 20. You get to decide the skill check. I will give you the obstacle that comes in your way. I need a certain number of successes from the party to determine whether or not you are successful in getting past this obstacle. If you fail, four out of the six, Richard gets to dine on Legends tonight. Also, I just realized why he's named Richard. Oh, hey! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're way. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What? I'm Moby Dick. What? I'm also guessing uh, throwing Caltrops behind us isn't going to help with a uh, thing this size. Yes, throw the Caltrop. Yes, throw, throw, throw the Caltrop. At the gargantuan worm. Yes, do it. <laughs> I'm about okay. to throw Martin. <laughs> Martin starts to scream insults and taunt Richard. He is saying, like, basically, I stab at thee from the bowels of hell. Like, he is Ishmaeling this thing. I'm sorry, Ahabing this thing, like, mad. As you're now probably scooting through the desert, close out of Macan, pushing, like, 120 miles an hour. First obstacle, as you're scootering through this desert, a massive rock appears in the middle of the desert. This is the ocean floor, just be a normal structure. But right now, it's a boulder. You need to all beat a DC 20. You get to decide what skill check you're making. Explain to me how you're going to help the whole ship steer away from a massive boulder. DC 20. Kickflip. Kickflip, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just... <laughs> see if we get this whole thing to just go. I'm going to use hold intimidation egg. to intimidate a boulder. <laughs> Hold X, release down square. That should be a kick flip, release a there push flip. Uh, I played way too much Tony Hawk the kid. Uh, so let me know what that skill check is and how you're going to use it. 22. And each he's just going to be paddling hard to the left. Okay, that's one success, 22. 24. Shionimus is going to move the sails. With what With what skill? Acrobat. Yeah, acrobatics. acrobatics. Okay. Now let's see. Someone else has to not use acrobatics. Alona, what are you using? 22 for nature. 22 for nature. Okay, 22 for nature. What are you doing that would be using nature? Oh, well, you know, I'm looking at the rock and I'm like, we're going to hit that rock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so so angles how to get around the rock. Perfect. Three successes. Ian, what you got? I got a 25 for survival. Okay. How and, you survival? Um, I think uh, Woodwort is... He quickly looks at everyone who's like helping with any of the ropes or anything like that. And he says, to the right. And everyone runs to the right side of the ship to get it to like lean one direction to try to help with that rudder to get okay. it out of the way. Nice. Rufa, what you got? Um, hmm. I use perception. Really fast. Uh, yeah, perception to basically uh, make sure we're going to be avoiding the rock correctly with that, with just the barest hint. Uh, what is it? Uh, kind of skimming it, not yeah. hitting it. Uh, totally. Give me a perception check. You're 20. Mm -hmm. Dirty 20. Awesome. I needed four saves. All five of you succeeded. Moving on the next obstacle. You have one victory point. If you collect three victory points, you can burn them in to automatically successfully bypass an obstacle. So you have one victory point. Next obstacle, attack of the sandworms. You suddenly see some of the worms inside Richard's body. Mon Van Vermees just like leave his body and you are now flanked by curtains of worms like the one you beat earlier. I need DC flat 20. I need a DC 20, I'm sorry. Check. Um, what skill? What are you doing? Twenty-nine for athletics. Twenty-nine, 29 that's success. Ichi's punching worms. Hell yeah. Worm bane. I uh I got a nineteen and I'm gonna use my craft check to mm -hmm. try to get a board or something up on the side of the boat to act as like a higher wall so they can't get over the top. Alright. Uh try to put it up, but the board slips and you lose it. DCB was twenty, unfortunately. That's one fail, one success. What do we got? I got a... Uh, uh, Michael. Okay, uh, using uh, warfare lore, he's using uh, naval warfare. Basically, he's imagining the worms as enemy ships, naval knowledge to avoid them. Tactics. Okay. I got 20, 21. 21. Okay, that's two successes. I only needed two chase points, uh, two successes to get past these things. Do you want to keep rolling? Are we good? I mean, I got a 25 for religion. I mean, I'll take it. Absolutely. Hey, Kylie, what'd you do? I got a dirty 20. Nice. All right. Hell yeah. So yeah. Alona just yells over the edge of the boat, Who's your god now, worms? <laughs> <laughs> the worms <laughs> are like, <laughs> the worms are like, 
super demoralized. You start moving and swerved. He worm of hero point. Uh, great job, everyone. Suddenly, as you get past the worms, you see this giant snake just continuing, or the giant worm just, just eating earth behind you. All like, giant boulders are just breaking its maw. And then suddenly, he spits, and a sandstorm starts to come in front of you. We have another sandstorm coming. I need only one of you to successfully succeed on this flat DC, or this DC 20 skill check. So roll DC 20, skill, let me know what it is. Explain to me what you're doing. Got an athletics 13 for me. Not to fail. Uh, I got a... I do some math, but I know I've got. I made it. Okay. I got a twenty-six. If that helps. Twenty-six, absolutely. Twenty-six as well. <laughs> I got a twenty-six as well. <laughs> hey, flawless. Okay. As the sandstorm comes over you, uh, E.G., you take five damage from the sandstorm, but uh, everyone grabs you and everyone batten down the hatches and everyone basically like hunkers in as the sandstorm just kind of whips over you, goes into the maw of the most impressive sni uh, worm that just literally spits worms from its body. Suddenly, you see the sands in front of you start to twist in a circle. But you, but you can't do anything about it so far. Or maybe you can. Shunbis, you recognize this as it starts to move, circle it into, this, into the earth itself. Quicksand is in front of you. DC 20 to avoid quicksand on this part of the chase. So far, you're doing a great job of keeping distance from the big white worm. 21. 21. Awesome. I need three more successes. Beat a 20, and you got it. 25. Hey, yo. Five. Alona, what you got? Uh, sorry, I muted again, or at least hard to hear you. What was that? I got a 13. Oh, no. Ain't no. that, that makes it down to Ian and Rufa to pass this. I got a 14. Rufa, what you got for me, dude? I got a one. Can I oh. sacrifice one of my hero points? I was going to say, oh, wait, you use my hero point. point. I do oh, have wait. a hero point. I haven't used the hero point yet. You haven't used a hero point yet? I'll let you roll it now. I've always used it now. about those. <laughs> no, right. Oh. Okay, you need to add two numbers. Okay. 28. 28. That's really good. Oh. However, I needed four successes. <gasps> I got three. Oh. Suddenly, you hear this horrible <laughs> as it comes closer and takes a bite out of the boat, <laughs> ripping off the wheel. It slams the ground. As this thing is now closer, you can smell thousands of years of decay coming from this massive worm. Round five, stay alive. Tremor, as it roars, the ground around you shakes violently as you can feel the earth itself turn into a trampoline and it just ripples and bounces. I need Three successes. DC 20. Tell me the skill. Tell me the number. I can't see that. Is that a 20? No, it's it's the opposite. Oh, I no. I, I'm, oh. Doing bad. I'm doing bad right now. One automatic fail. I just need three successes. 21 for acrobatics. That's a success. I got a uh, 22 for survival. Success. I just need one more success, you guys. 22 for religion. Because I got a 19 for athletics. <laughs> Ooh. So as you're trying to grab it, you are praying to a, you're praying to Afra, and suddenly you see the sun shine a little brighter. And as the maw is starting to just sink its teeth on the, on the other uh, side of the boat, it goes <laughs> as the sun burns its dull eyes and it starts to lose its pacing. You have... Four successes, one failure. 
Suddenly, Richard takes its head back, slams its mouth into the ground, split the sea. The sand itself now starts to part like the water has been doing for the past week. As it starts to rip and rend and open, you see nothing but hellfire beneath you. Richard will dine on legends. Let the gods damn him. He is hungry for the elite. This is the final part of the chase. DC 20, you have four successes. Who's gonna be the first to roll? Hero point. 25. 25, Nat one success. 20. Nat. 20. Finally got it. After two ones. <laughs> you put in your time. You I'll, tell you this, I'll tell you this right now. I need all of you to succeed on this. I have two successes. DC to beat is 20. Okay. Ian, what did you roll? I just got another I just got another Nat 20 for tonight. Stop. Yes. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm gonna just, use go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say for my nat 20, I don't know how, but I want to use it for my occult. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Ian, what are you doing? Uh, I want to use a craft check and I'm gonna take uh, one of the tarpaulins that's like covering down any of the supplies or anything and throw it up as an extra sail, like tied to the ship to try to get us more momentum. Nice. Alona, what was your roll? Hold up. I hold up. I use your point. I'm going to math. 21. You beat it by one point. I have four successes. I need one more for this last leg to be surpassed. 30, 20. With acrobatics. Yes. And she's going to catch the sail and put it up. That <laughs> one word. Uh. <laughs> so. As the ground starts to rip asunder, you start kind of gliding the rail a little bit on the edge, and, it's, and you finally get to a point where the rips stop. And then Martin kind of looks and he goes, Oh, oh, you've learned a new trick, have you? Oh, yeah, crafty bastard. And he starts grabbing two harpoons and runs the front of the deck. And he just keeps screaming that, that Ahab monologue, like, I stab at thee from the depths of hell. And suddenly, you hear it make a noise one more time as it breaches in front of you, mouth open wide, letting you fall into its own mouth. You have five success points out of six. You can attempt right now a hellacious 25 DC to not go deep into its gut. Or you can cash them all in, why not walk away? Also, really quick, Rufus gonna look at Martin. And just stop teasing it. <laughs> and he looks at, You're he looks, just making it worse. He looks over and he goes like, "You don't understand. You don't get it. You know whatever gets me. You're making just, it worse." So, what do you do as a team? As a team, you have like three minutes to decide: Are you going to roll? Or are you going to cash in your points? Points. Yeah, we could yeah. just cash it in. Go home. All right. Go okay. home. I would love to know what right? happens, though. So, it would be cool. The mouth becomes a cave. You've seen structures, stone structures, entrances to massive buildings. Smaller. I'm sorry. Yeah, smaller than this guy's mouth. I want you all to tell me the tale of one thing you do to get out of the way of Richard's Evermaw. Is this with the boat or just yeah. individually? You decide, boat or yourself. Ichi picks up that bucket that she dumped water on uh, Tobias with. Mm -hmm. She takes it and she looks for like the soft spot in this worm's mouth, which is the little dangly thing. The uvula? She, yeah, she takes this bucket and she just like quarterback Bam, it's right there to hopefully like kind of throw it off. Okay. All right. Michael, what are you gonna do? Rufa, he's going to 
he wants it for the sake of everybody. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna grab a rope, mm -hmm. put silver at woodwork. In case you're gonna transform into anything, he throws him the one in the rope, and the other end, he just throws it to whoever else is around to have it thrown to another person. All right. Yes. Um, Woodward at this point, now that uh, Shionabis has this sail in front of her that Wood Woodward created, um, he sees the tall mast of this ship in front of him, and uh, he turns into uh, this ape form, this big gorilla, and just grabs the mast and takes it out of the boat to like throw it to hopefully get that stuck. You know, bias time is he has to crack through the mass before he gets to the ship. All right, all right, all right. Alona, what are you doing? Um, Alona shoots. It's dark in here, right? I'm assuming. As you as you start to enter the mouth, you can tell the mouth is is an infinite cavern. Great. Um, Alona Alona uses her uh, light ability to shoot a gigantic passion flower into the sky, sort of like a sunburst to illuminate everything. Mm -hmm. And she uh, runs over to Shionibus and casts guidance on her, saying, "I think this last part's up to you." I'm right. I'm on, I'm in the mast, like hanging from ropes. I'm well, not on the ground. You're on the <laughs> yeah. You're holding the 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 new sail, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I yeah. see the mast. It's not attached to the sail. Okay. Okay. Or, yeah, I uh, the mast is the other sail that we got rid of. So I think you're still here. I th I don't know anymore. I definitely wouldn't have thrown you overboard. Honestly, <laughs> I'll say I'll say this. Assuming yeah, assuming Eden wouldn't throw you overboard. What is, what is Shonibus doing? Um, so PJ, rule of cool. I don't know if you're up for this. I want to have the. Ability. You know how in Sinbad, how they're about to go to Tartarus and they're coming mm -hmm. to like the edge of the world? I want the ship to fly. I got you. All right. So here we go. Mouth is there. You're skyrocketing on it. Ichi throws this bucket at the creature's uvula. You hear it coughing and choking on the bucket, that, that horrible reflex that kicks in. Um, you have the rope uh, ready and people are, are just just getting ready for the worst case scenario. You shoot up that uh, symbol in the sky. It stretches a lot bigger than you anticipated, Alona. It is massive in the sky. And as you can hear Richard start to look at it, you see the mass is ripping open and thrown at this creature. Suddenly, Shionibus looks, she takes the, um, the buoy to balance on water and slams the side really hard. The boat gets air and starts turning sideways. As it does, you see the creature, Richard, choking on the bucket, and the mask gets stuck in its mouth. And as it does, Martin, with his two harpoons, just takes a step, leaps off the boat, and starts plummeting into the mouth of Richard and saying, Last time, you big bastard, and falls. And, you, and as he's falling into it, the boat flies over the creature sideways, starts spinning. You're going hundreds of feet over this thing, and it lands sideways. The other leg shoots off the boat, bottoms out, breaks. The wood splinters and fires as it spins away, turns over on its side, and just starts scuttling. You can hear the scraping scream of wood being ripped by friction against the sand and ground and earth beneath you and silently stops. And as the boat stops, all is quiet. Your eyes are traumatized from the impact and the sound and the senses too much. And then you see Richard, the Evermaw, the Great Devourer, sink back into the sand sea. You don't see Martin, but you hear one last maniacal cackle as it goes, I knew you couldn't kill me, bastard. I see at the center of the earth. And as that happens, your eyes start to, from just a sheer weak travel. And as it closes, the last thing you see 
is what looks like the face of a jaguar kind of sniffing you. And then suddenly the jaguar rolls back and you see a human head. Hey, we have people here. Get get the other jaguar guards. We need we need to get them now. They're they, they're in dire shape. And that is where we're ending today's episode. Episode 40 of Edge of Legend. I'm can I just sure end on the note? Day. Can as that happens, can Ichi just say, I'm home? One of stops and turns and goes, oh, I'm such a fan of yours. <laughs> Black. <laughs> <laughs> And that is episode 40 of Edge of Legend, The Sand Sea. I hope you had a great time. It was awesome having you all here, my players. You did an amazing job. Let's say our goodbyes, because it's been a long night, and you've all been through a lot. So starting with Mr. Michael Powell, tell them who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Can I say there's an after credit screen, and it's just like Rufa going, damn you, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I am Michael Pow, and you can find me all over the internet on my social medias, which is at Mr. Kapow, that's M-R-K-A-P-A-O, or my Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash Michael Pow does stuff, because I do a lot of stuff like my YouTube channel, which is Fantastic Tales of Adventure. And on Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, Pacific Standard Time, on the Toyzilla Network channel, you can find me on Toyzilla Live, where I co-host a show about toy news and more. So yeah, hope to see you there. All right, Senior, Sydney Rabino, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Oh gee, me. Hi, uh, my name is Sydney Rabino. You can find me all over the internet at Sydney Rabino. I am on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Come talk to me. I like new friends. Um, I also have a YouTube channel where every Tuesday I upload videos of me as a character reading folklore and fairy tales and then um, discussing the morals that we can take from those. So if you like being read to or you like stories that you might necessarily not have heard, come follow me on my YouTube page. Um, and I also got a job at a brewery in LA. So if you like beer, you can come, you can come find me at 818 uh, Brewing in uh, Canoga Park and I'll, I'm a beer wench now. I'll serve you some beer. My first day is Saturday. Please be nice. Oh okay. my God. We have to we have to bother her. That sounds amazing. Uh, okay. So legends, that's our plan. Uh, that being said. Uh, Becoming character. Oh, I have so <laughs> many though. Uh, Ian, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on the sweet, sweet internet. Hey guys, my name is Ian. Um, if you want to find me on the internet, I go by Bearded Scald. You probably saw me in chat. Um, if you don't not seeing me in chat, you can follow me on Twitter and where I post pretty much at least three or four times a week at any given time, always up for conversations or our Discord. Um, and to continue on with this, uh, my art wall behind me, I'm sure Mahooch, I saw their name come up in chat today. They are the type and pint. Uh, as it says, you can go get your good stuff. And uh, check out his prints and art. Um, awesome stuff at thetypeandpint.com. And I will drop all this stuff into our Discord as well. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, okay. Um, Sam, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. Hello. I am Sam, and you can find me at Hey Sam Sterling all over the internet. I am on TikTok making silly videos for no good reason. So go watch those. It's a good time. And uh, also Twitter, you can check out whenever I'm streaming somewhere else, like this Saturday. Oh wait, tomorrow, first thing first. Tomorrow, we've got our bro uh, Boardroom Armageddon Purgatory Cafe, which is our um, over on Life Action role play. We play demons who uh, meet with angels in a coffee shop in Purgatory, and it's a good time. And then Saturday, Poison Tulips over on Gilding Light. And I think uh, PJ can probably tell you more of that because he's on it too. Well, I will do it my turn. Thank you very much, Sam. Uh, Kylie, please tell us who you are and where we can find you on that sweet, sweet internet. 
Hello, I'm Kylie, or I go by Kylie. It really doesn't matter at this point. Uh, when I am not here, uh, well, first we'll do handles. You can find me at Kai's Wonderful Life, Kai's Wonderful Life on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all that good stuff. Um, TikTok, or today's a rough day. Twitter, I will be posting all the awesome Twitch channels I'm in, like on Monday nights, Mondays, yeah, at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I do D&D homebrew with a bunch of lovely ladies uh, from the City of Promise. I play a half-orc fighter, uh, and you can find us at Dragons and Dreamers. This upcoming Sunday, I am starting a brand new D&D campaign with a whole bunch of lovely people, uh, and that's on Viking Boyo's account here on Twitter at 10 a.m. Central Time. So that's a fun time. Don't know what I'm playing yet, but we'll you're along for the ride no matter what, right? So yeah, come check it out. Yeah. Please make sure to post a link on our Discord because I would love to see uh, and support all my friends, especially as they do shows like that too. Uh, hey everyone, my name is PJ McGaw. You can find me all over the internet at pj.mcgaw. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Come find me. Let's have a good time when I'm not here with these absolute legends. I love and adore. You can also find me here Tuesdays, 3.30 to 5.30 with Mr. Michael Powell as uh, we tell you to pull up a chair, get your TTRPG books, and join us at the tables. We discuss the many awesome things about TTRPGs and role play. Uh, also... Tomorrow, uh, for the Purgatory Cafe, a certain charming southern boy, Barakiel the Angel, is coming to uh, the Purgatory Cafe, uh, which reminds me I need to get a bomber jacket from Santa Clarita. Never heard of him. I don't know what you're talking about. What? Who is it, Barakiel? I think he's a handsome uh, boy. So anyway, Thursday, come see me, live action, life action role play. Uh, myself and Sam Sterling and a bunch of friends of ours play angels and demons at a coffee house. Just trying to kick back with the venti macchiato. What? What? What's up? Uh, last but not least, this Saturday, uh, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. on twitch.tv backslash gilding light. You can come find me and Sam Sterling playing a bunch of guards, guards, bards, bards, bards causing chaos. Hey, I for... played a guard last time, didn't I? You, uh, I think the first episode. First, episode. first episode. It's okay. I played a ta uh, tabaxi high on catnip. Look, we're all here to have a good time. Uh, so come find me on Gilding Light. I'm sorry, us on Gilding Light. As we play bards, as chaos ensues. Uh, from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, and, of course, as you've seen, we have a coffee up. Uh, we thank you so much for all your donations. We have more exciting announcements to come as the year progresses. And to all of the players uh, who are in the Jasper's Game Day, I believe uh, Scups and Reef Psyche are two very lucky members of our audience who will be my game. Uh, welcome to Temperance Day. Welcome to the Pathfinder City of Diabelle. You wonderful uh, Hell Knight Armagers, you. Let's see if you can pass your graduation test. I look forward to seeing you in May and everyone else. Have a great night. Uh, Michael, who are we rating this evening? Uh, we are rating Twitch Slays D&D. &D. They're playing some D&D &D and uh, with audience participation. Ooh. Ooh. Well, let's give them some audience participation, shall we? I'm so excited too, Reap Psyche. I cannot wait to see. I saw a little bit of your character concept in the Discord. I'm really curious to see that in execution. Uh, all right. So Speaking everyone... of Discord, if you're in it, I posted some lovely pictures of City Rubino uh, from this stream earlier, and you should go check them out. Yep. It's pretty wait, much, what? I think, her. Oh, yeah. It's like your greatest work, Sydney. That being said, we're going to raid. Bye. Bye.